Hello my friends, today we are gonna create this complete Netflix application using Node.js, React and MongoDB. This is our homepage. Whenever you refresh the page, it fetches random featured movie and random lists here. And if you click this series, it's gonna load only series. If you click the movies, it's gonna load only movies from MongoDB. And of course, you can choose any genre here. You can use this beautiful slider and hover to see details and the trailer. If you click one of them, the watching page will show up. And to see all these pages, the user should be authenticated. Let's log out. As you can see, when I try to reach the home page, it redirects me to the register page. You can register and log in. Awesome. And here is our admin dashboard. We have here user chart that shows the new user number per month and here our latest users. Let's go to the movies page. You can see all movies here and delete any of them, update them and create new one. After entering all this information, let's choose its images, trailer and video. By the way, we are gonna be using Firebase storage to upload our files. After uploading, our button turns into a create button and all files in the storage right now. When I click to create button, it's gonna create new movie in our DB with all its image and video links. And finally, we can click the list, see our movie lists here, delete, update and create new list. Awesome. We are gonna start with creating our REST API using Node.js and MongoDB and we are gonna be using JWT for authentication and authorization. So our application will be more secure and easy to manage user levels. And after that, we are gonna take care of our client site and admin dashboard. And if you didn't watch the design part of the application or design part of the admin panel, I highly recommend you to watch them first, so it's gonna be easier for you to follow this video I think. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to deploy your Manstack apps in hosting services, so stay tuned. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to the channel and like the video and also you can join if you want to support the channel and future projects. Okay, if you are ready, let's get started. Okay, I created here two folders. One of them will be our backend server and this is our React application. It's running on the browser, as you remember last video. And there are some warnings here, but they are not important because we didn't assign any password or login or register pages, but we are gonna handle these problems today. Okay, so if you wanna, let's create our backend server. I'm gonna open new terminal here and let's open our API, CD API, and I'm gonna initialize my node application. I will say npm and init. And I'm gonna write here y flag, and I'm gonna accept all the initial settings. I will enter, and it's ready. Let's check here. As you can see, our package JSON is here. Right now, I'm gonna install libraries which we are gonna use today. First one will be our express server. I will say yarn add. If you are using npm, you can write npm e and then package name. But we are gonna use yarn and I will say first express. This is our backend server. To connect our MongoDB, we are gonna use mongoose. And to run our application automatically on every changes, we are gonna use nodemon. After creating server, we should hide our MongoDB URL or any other secret keys. So we are gonna use .env. And finally, I will say JSON web token. If you watch my previous projects, we didn't use JSON web token. That because I didn't upload any video about JWT. But finally, I published an awesome video. You can check that video. That because it's really important. 
I'm not gonna deep dive into it today, otherwise this tutorial will be really long. So basically, to make our application more secure, we are gonna be using JWT. And that's all for now. I'm gonna enter and wait until all these installations. Okay, it's done. Our all dependencies are here. Let's create our main JavaScript file. It's gonna be index.js. So let's create our application. It's gonna be const express. I'm gonna import it first. Require, and it's gonna be express. It's really easy to create application. I will write here my application, and it's just gonna be express function, like that. So how I'm gonna run this application? I will come here, app and listen. We should listen any port in our local host. Let's say 8800. It really doesn't matter. You can use whatever you want. And I'm gonna create here arrow function. And I'm gonna console log my connection. I will say backend server is running. Okay. So how I'm gonna run this application? I can come here and say not index.js, but in any changes, I have to write this again and again. To prevent this, I will come here and use node mode. I will write here start. We are not gonna test anything. And here, let's delete it. And node mode index.js. Let's start. I will say yarn start or npm start. As you can see, backend server is running. Awesome. So let's close here and create our MongoDB connection. I will say const mongoose. It's going to be require our mongoose package. And let's come here first and create our cluster. If you go to the cloud.mongodb.com, this is the cloud service of MongoDB. As you can see, there is free option here. Let's create a cluster. There are different options here. You can use Amazon, Google, or Microsoft servers, and here, any data center. So I'm gonna use US East. Let's create. It's gonna take time during installation. Let's come here. Network access, you should add your IP address, otherwise you cannot access the DB. You can choose your current IP address or you can just allow from anywhere. I will choose just this one, it's not important. We are not gonna deploy for now, so you can allow access from anywhere also. I will just confirm. I'm explaining that, that because I saw a lot of comments under other projects. Some of people just struggled with accessing DB. So I'm gonna explain everything step by step. And after that, let's come here, database access, and you should create a user to access your DB. Let's create, my username will be Lama and password will be Lama also. And I'm gonna add my user. Of course, it's really big, but it's just a tutorial. It's not important for me. After tutorial, I'm gonna delete it. <laughs> so let's go to the R clusters. Okay, it's ready. To connect our DB, I'm gonna choose here, connect. You can use your terminal or desktop application, but we are gonna use just our application, I mean, inside our code. So I'm gonna copy this URL. It's really important. It includes our username here, Lama, and my password is Lama also, and this is gonna be my first database. We are gonna change them. But before, let's come here and see how we are gonna connect. This is Mongo's documentation, and here, as you can see, there is a connect method. Let's copy this, and here, I'm gonna paste. And this is gonna be our URL, but writing here URL, is not secure. For example, when you share your codes or when you upload your codes in the GitHub, everyone can see your DB address, your password, your username. To prevent this, we are gonna use 
dot env and we are gonna hide this URL. So let's create here dot env file. And inside I'm gonna create a variable. I will say mongo URL and it's gonna be my URL here. Let's copy again. Let's actually choose here and I'm gonna paste. So let's change them. I will delete them and I will say llama and my database name will be Netflix. And that's all. I will save. And to use that URL, I'm going to write here process and env. So we actually choose this env file and this is my URL, mongo URL. Okay. But if I save this, it's not going to work because we didn't give any configuration for our .env file. Let's come here and say const .env and I'm going to import it first and after I'm going to give my configuration. I will say .env and just config and that's all. But we cannot see our connection for now. It's really important if you make any changes in the env file. I highly recommend you to restart your backend server. I'm gonna just kill this process and start again. Okay, but we cannot see our connection. Let's write here. Then if it's connected, I'm just gonna console log this. I will say console log and let's say db connection successful and if there is any error I will write here catch and it's gonna catch this error and I'm gonna console log this also okay I will save and as you can see backend server is running db connection is successful perfect right now we can create our routes and models let's come here what we have, let's see. Firstly, we are going to have a user. If we are not logged in, we are not going to be allowed to see this home page or series or movies. It's going to be only register page. After registration, we will be able to see them. And here, as you can see, we have lists. For example, best horror movies, amazing action movies, something like that. And finally, we are going to have our movies or series. As you can see, it has image and this thumbnail image and video here. This is actually a trailer, but if we watch this, we are going to see the actual video. We have duration, limit, year and description and genre here. Let's add them. I'm going to start with user. We are going to be using mongoose again. I'm going to copy this and let's create here models. Oops, I created file. It's going to be folder. Okay. And inside, we are going to have user and movie and list. Okay. Let's close them for now. And here, I'm going to call my mongoose. And after, I'm going to create a schema. I will say const user schema. And I'm going to create new mongoose schema, new mongoose dot schema. Okay. I'm going to write here all properties of a user. First one will be username and type will be string. And it's going to be required because I don't want to see any user without username. It's going to be true. And finally, I will say unique. So that means we cannot create another user with the same name. And that's all. And other one, email. Actually, I can copy here and paste. It's going to be same. String required and unique. And what else? Password. That's right here. And it doesn't have to be unique. It's just a password. And I'm going to write here profile picture. Type will be string. And 
it's not going to be required because in the register process we don't have to give any image i will say for default after registration it's going to be just empty string and finally i'm going to write here is admin it's going to be boolean it's going to be just true or false and by default it's going to be false because when we register we are not going to be admin automatically and one more thing i can write here timestamps it's going to create created add and updated add timestamps you don't have to write this but maybe if we are going to need it in the future okay so i should export this user schema then we are going to update any user delete or create i will say module export and mongoose model and my model name will be user and my reference point will be my user schema okay that's all it's ready so let's create others i will copy this and for movie i'm just gonna paste it and let's change this name it's gonna be movie and here movie and movie schema okay firstly we are gonna have title it's gonna be string required and unique and we are gonna have description string it can be only string let's delete them and we are gonna have image type is gonna be string again because we are gonna pass our urls i will delete them actually okay i'm gonna create two more images that because let's come here this is gonna be our image this big one and this is as you remember our title image i can move this like that and finally it's gonna be our thumbnails here so i will say image title and image let's say small maybe and we are gonna have trailer and actual movie which is video and remember all of them are string and what else let's check if i hover this we have duration limit year and genre i will say year it's gonna be limit by the way it's gonna be number because this is age limit number oops let's move this here and change it it's gonna be genre and i'm gonna add one more thing as you remember we have series and movies buttons here it can be either a movie or series let's check them is series and type will be boolean and by default it's gonna be false it looks nice everything looks good i'll save it and let's copy this and let's go to the list i'll paste and let's change these names i'm using ctrl d by the way to choose all these same names so it's gonna be list okay first one will be title again let's see here continue to watch we are gonna change them it can be required and unique and i will write type here it can be movie or series and i'm gonna leave this genre and finally we are gonna have content and it's gonna be array that because we are gonna store our movies each list has 10 movies remember here of course we are not gonna store whole movies we are gonna just store their ids so i will say type array and that's all i think let's save okay they are ready i think let's close them and right now i can create my roots i will say root roots actually and inside it's gonna be again user let's say users.js and movies.js lists.js 
You don't have to use plural, but it's kind of naming convention. I recommend you to use like that. So basically, in these routes, we are going to make our CRUD operations. There is an exception here, and this is our users. We are not going to create any users inside this file. Instead of this, I'm going to create another root here, which is authentication. Let's say auth jazz. Okay. So basically, we are going to register and log in here. So let's close all of them and oops, okay, I'm just going to open my authentication route and here let's create our register and login methods. I should indicate this is a router. To do that, I will say const router and I'm going to call my express library and router method. I will say require and express and finally router method. Okay. So what I need here, we are going to take care of our users. So I should import it also const user and require in the other file, other folder, uh, models folder, and finally user. Okay. So let's create our user. I will write here register. And I'm going to write here router and post. It's going to be post method because we are creating something. Don't forget, if you are creating, you should use post. If you are updating, put. If you are fetching some data, only get something. We are going to use get. And for delete, we are going to use delete. Okay, so this is going to be our URL. Let's say register. So basically, when we go to this URL, for example, localhost, remember our port number here, 8800, localhost 8800, and slash register. Maybe we can indicate API here before register, and maybe authentication. But we are not going to do this here. We are going to take care of them in the index.js. So anyway, so I'm going to write here my request and response. So basically, user gonna make a request to this URL. After creating user, we are gonna send them a response. Okay. So how I'm gonna create a user? Let's write here const new user. And I'm gonna use my model new user. Remember, we imported. And inside, I'm gonna write my credentials. First one will be username user gonna send this inside its body and its name is username. If you are not familiar with REST APIs, I can explain you like that. Let's open here Postman. So here, let's create a request. As you can see, this is our method. We are gonna use post and we are gonna write here our URL. It's gonna be localhost. This is my previous applications. It's going to be localhost 8800 and API and auth and register. And there is a send button here. To send my user, I will choose here body, as you can see. And here, I'm going to choose row. And finally, it's going to be JSON file. So basically, we are going to send our Username, let's say Lama, and we are gonna send our email, let's say Lama at gmail.com, and finally my password. It's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six. So basically, this is my body which I can send my credentials. So I'm gonna use this body request body. So basically this request by the username is this username inside my body in the postman. Okay. So for the others, it's going to be email and password. So my new user is ready. How am I going to send this inside my DB? I will say const user. And here I'm going to just save my user. 
because remember we are using our model here and inside my model we are using mongoose and mongoose schema it's gonna automatically save our user inside our db so it's that easy new user and it's gonna be saved okay we have a couple problems here first one will be the duration of this process that because we might have some problem on our server or maybe this mongodb server when we make request there is no way to know how long it's gonna take so if i write here response and json and this user i'm sending oops 404 not found that because we didn't indicate this router inside our index.js let's come here i'm gonna write my router quickly here i will say const auth root and it's gonna require my router roots and authentication okay so how i'm gonna use this router let's come here before listening our server i will say app.use and as i said before we can indicate here any endpoint and it's gonna be api and auth and it's gonna call our oops here root okay if you make any request take this endpoint and this endpoint belongs to this root which is our authentication here then we send request api auth and register it's gonna automatically run this function there is a problem let's see okay that because we didn't export our router here let's export i will say module dot exports and it's gonna be just router okay right now everything is okay and there is an another warning here it's about our mongodb in the documentation it says for the configuration you can add this but we should add one more thing here create indexes to do that i'm gonna write here use create indexes and it's gonna be true i will save again and right now there is no warning and one more thing i should do here <laughs> i forgot i'm sorry and this problem is using this body and sending any json file because in the express server it's not gonna accept this json file by default but it's really easy to handle that i will just come here and say app.use then we make request just accept express and json files that's all okay let's try again i will send and as you can see there is an error that because it takes time to save this user and before saving we are just gonna try to send this user but it doesn't exist for now so how i'm gonna handle this i'm gonna write here async function it means it's not synchronous we should wait the answer first to wait that i will write here await and that's all i will save and here we can write any status let's say status is going to be 200 or 201 which is successfully created and it's really important if you are using async await you should write here try catch block that because it might be any error and it's going to be inside we are going to try to save this and send as response if there is an error here we are just gonna catch it and just send this error i will say 500 which is server error and it's gonna be error so let's try again i will send why it's still sending there is a problem here user is not a constructor so it means we have a problem in user our model here new schema ah okay i write here export it should be exports and for others it's the same yeah let's correct them
Okay. Let's see our backend server is successful. DB connection is successful. Let's try again. And as you can see, it turns us a user. Let's come here, our cluster and collections. As you can see, we have a Netflix collection here and users documents. And this is our first user. But the problem is, as you can see, we have a password as string. We should never ever store this password like that. We should hash this somehow and it should be some gibberish code here and it's not gonna be visible anymore. So I'm gonna delete this user and I'm gonna install another library here, which is Crypto.js. Let's copy this library name and here another terminal here and I'm gonna go to my API and I'm gonna yarn add this package. So basically in its website, as you can see, there are many hashing algorithms, MD5, which is less secure, and others. And I saw here something, which is AES. As you can see, the advanced encryption standard is a US federal information processing standard. So it looks really secure. So we are going to use this. Let's close here. And I'm going to copy this and here my authentication, I'm going to import this. Of course, it's not going to be var, it's going to be const. If you are a boomer, you can use var. And after, as you can see, in this way, we can encrypt our password. And in this way, we can decrypt and compare with the user password. So I'm going to copy this. And here I will say, it's not going to be request body password anymore. It's going to be, oops, let's do it here. Crypto.js, AEX, encrypt, and my message will be my password, which is request body and password. And here you can write any script key. Of course, you can indicate this inside your EMV file. Let's come here. And after this Mongo, I will say, secret key and let's write here something of course it should be stronger but for now for the tutorial it's totally enough i will say process and yummy and my script key oops why we have also look here okay let's delete it and i'm gonna try again I will come here and send again. And as you can see, this time our password is a hashed code. It's perfect. Awesome. We finished our registration. Let's come here, write another function, which is login. And I'm going to do the same thing for now. I will say router uh, post. Our URL will be login. And after I'm going to write here request and response and right now what I'm gonna do is taking email and password from user and it's gonna be login and I'm gonna try to find this user that's right here another try and catch because it's gonna be async function again response it's gonna be 500 of course, it doesn't have to be 500, but we are not handling any error numbers right now. It's not important. Of course, it's important, but for this tutorial, at least, it's not. Okay. And here I will say async function. And inside my try block, I'm gonna try to find this user. I'll say const user, and I'm gonna use my model and my function which is find one and i'm gonna write here my condition if email equals request body and email which is send it by user it means we have this user if we don't have let's write here if there is no user 
I'm just gonna send an error. 404 is gonna be not found or you can write 401 not authenticated. So I'm gonna send wrong password or using me. Okay, so if there is a user, we are gonna continue and I'm gonna validate my password because remember, user is sending this string, but in the DB, I will refresh again. As you can see, it's encrypted password. So how I'm gonna compare them? Let's come here. And as you can see, this is our decryption function. Let's copy them. And here, let's change them const. Let's write here original password. Again, I'm gonna use .env process and env and my secret key. And here, I'm gonna write my hashed password which is user and password. Remember, we take this user and it has password, which is here. Okay, so basically it's gonna decrypt this and after we can compare. If the original password equals a password that we sent, request and body, by the way, there's a mistake here, typo, okay, and password. Actually, I can write if it's not equal. Okay. And I'm gonna send same error here. So if they are equal, finally I can send my user. I will say response and status, let's say 200 and JSON, this user. And I forgot here await. I will save and let's send again. As you can see, wrong password or username. I will change this password. Again, wrong one. And finally, it's gonna be correct. And it's gonna return us our user. But as you can see, it returns password also. You shouldn't send this password because we are gonna store this inside our local storage. So what we can do here, there's a easy trick. I will say const and I'm gonna destructure this password inside user and the other things. Let's say info. And if I say user and document, which is our whole information here, our document. So I can send only this info. So what I did here, I took all these document, I said take this password here and other information which is his admin, id, username, email and these timestamps. So I said hold this password, I need just this information, I will just send it. Let's try, I will send again and this time as you can see we don't have password, absolutely. We don't have any problem, but in the future we are gonna have that because when we use, for example, here users and it's gonna be our user ID, for example, something like that. And I'm gonna try to delete this user or update, whatever. So how I'm gonna decide whether this username belongs to me or not. So basically I can send here user ID and it's gonna be my user ID in the local storage and I can compare if this user ID equals this user ID I can delete this user but it's a not efficient way that because if someone knows your user ID he can just change here with your user ID and he can delete or update your account, posts, comments and whatever so to prevent this there is an awesome library which is JWT. I prepared an awesome video about it. You can reach this in the card on the top right. And I highly, highly recommend you to watch that video. That because it's really important. And here I'm gonna create JSON web token. And I'm not gonna deep dive into it because I don't wanna explain same thing 20 minutes, half hour. Just watch that video. If you already watched, 
or if you know how the JWT works, you can just continue. So basically, we are going to create a JSON web token and it's going to contain our user ID and is admin property here inside user. So in this case, we don't have to send here any body property. We are going to just send our JWT, which no one can create but us in the login section. And we are just going to compare this JWT, whether it is valid or not. If it's, we are going to check our user ID with the user ID here. Or if we are creating any movie or list, it's going to check whether we are an admin or not. And it's going to allow us to continue these processes. It's basically like that. So how am I going to create this access token? Let's come here and first import our JWT. I will say const jwt and require json web token okay and after login before sending any information i'm gonna create a web token i will say const access token and i'm gonna use jwt and to create a new token i will use sign and here i'm gonna give some information inside this jwt First one will be my ID, user.id, and second one will be is admin. And it's gonna be user.isadmin. So basically, it's gonna hide this information inside the token, and I should indicate here a secret key. Actually, I can use same secret key. I don't wanna waste time. And finally, you can write here any expiration date. Let's write here, expires in, and I'm gonna say five days, for example. After five days, it's not gonna be valid anymore. We should log in again. In the JWT video, I showed how to use refresh token to make this application more secure. But for now, we don't need this. It's totally enough. We are gonna just have access token and we are gonna control our CRUD operations. So right now I can send this access token also. Let's write here an object and I'm gonna use spread operator here. So this object will contain all this information and additionally, it's gonna contain access token. Let's save and try again. If you are confused, don't worry, don't give up. I promise you just watch again and you are gonna understand better. So I'm sending again. Oh, okay, I'm using the late method here. Post. I will change this. Login. And here. I will take back. Okay, let's try again. Oops, I didn't correct here. Okay, as you can see, all this information and additionally access token. Perfect. Right now, when I try to delete, I'm not gonna send anything here, but if we send this access token, it's impossible to create again, that because no one know which properties we gave here and which secret key we are using. And also there's a expired in date, so it's much more secure. So that's all for this authentication router. We can register and log in right now. Let's close here and open our user's root here. Okay, let's call our router here. Const router and it's gonna require our express and router function. And I'm gonna use again my user model, const user and it's gonna require my user model. Models and user. And let's come here. Again, we are gonna use this crypto method. That because we can update our password again. And here I'm gonna write my roots. First one will be update. And we are gonna have the late method. And we can get one user. We can get all users. 
in the admin panel we can fetch all users and finally i will fetch user statistics let's say user stats so what it's gonna turn us it's gonna basically turn us the total user number per month for example in january we gained five people in february maybe a hundred people so we can see how many users we have let's start with update i will say router and this is gonna be put because we are updating and i'm gonna give a parameter here it's gonna be id which is user id and i will say async and request and response and i can write my function firstly as i said we are not gonna verify this by looking inside our body we are gonna verify our json web token to do that i'm gonna create here another js file which is verify token and inside I'm gonna create my oops verify and here let's first import our JWT JSON web token and after I can write my function I'm gonna export it so it's easy to write this with function let's say verify and it's gonna take request response and next basically we are gonna write here our verify function and before making any process here making any operation it's gonna go to this verify function it's gonna try to verify us this token is valid or not if everything is okay we are gonna use this next part and after it's gonna run this function before let's export this then I'm gonna forget probably <laughs> exports and it's gonna be my function okay firstly I should get my JWT however I'm gonna send this it's not gonna in the body it's gonna be in the headers and here we can give any key here let's say token for example and value will be bearer and my JWT token so basically we are gonna take this token let's come here and say const auth header and it's gonna be request pay attention here it's not gonna be body it's gonna be headers and I'm gonna take this key which is token but if I do that it's gonna contain this bearer also I wanna split this and take the second one to do that i will say const but before let's say if there is token if there is this header we can split this and take our actual token and verify if it's not if we don't provide any token it's going to return us an error i will say return response status it's going to be 401 which is not authenticated and I'm gonna send an error I will say you are not authenticated if we have a token let's split this I will say const token header just space that because we have a space here between bearer and actual token and I'm gonna take the second one which is one that because it's an array this is zero and this is one okay right now we have a token let's verify to do that I'm gonna use JWT and I will say verify and I'm gonna give here my token my secret key which is process and EMV and secret key And it's gonna return us an error or our credentials which we gave let's open here as you remember where is our token here it includes our ID and admin so basically we can say just user you can write here anything you want you can say info or user or whatever you want and I'm gonna say 
if there is an error, it means this token is not valid, we can send an error. I will say status uh, 403, which is forbidden, and JSON, and I'm gonna say token is not valid. Okay, I can see you have a token, but it's expired or it's not valid, you changed it or something like that. And I'm sorry, you can't go anywhere. And if there is no error, we can assign new request variable here. Let's say user and it's going to be our credentials, this user, our ID and admin. And finally, I can say next and we can go to the actual router. So we can use it. Let's come here and let's verify if request and user and ID equals this ID, which is request and params and ID. Or if request and user is admin, we are allowed to delete this user. So I will say, sorry, we are updating. It's not deleting right now. So I can create try catch block and try to update my user. But before I should check whether we are changing our password or not. That because if we are changing, we should encrypt this again. Let's check this password. I will say if there's a password. I'm gonna encrypt this again. Let's come here for register. Let's copy this. And here I will say new password and equals this hashed password. Okay. Right now I can write my try catch block. If there is an error, I can send this response. It's going to be 500 and JSON. Let's send this error. By the way, for this if block, I can send another error here. That because it means we are not allowed to update this user, I will say as response and I'm gonna send 403 which is forbidden and it's gonna be you can update only your account so let's try to update this I will say const updated user and it's gonna be await and I'm gonna use my model and I will say find by ID and update. And I'm gonna provide my ID, which is request params.id or request user ID, it's the same thing. After finding this user, which has this ID, we can set new properties. I'm gonna say set and request.body. For example, I'm going to change my email like that and I'm going to change my password. So it's going to take whole body and set this again. And after that, if everything is okay, I can send this updated user. I will say request, sorry, response and 200 and I'm going to send this user. But if I do that, it's not going to return this updated user actually. Let's see first. You will understand better right now. First, I should log in. Let's change them. I will log in. Actually, it was here. But anyway, let's create another request here. Actually, it's going to be put methods and localhost 88 and users it's gonna be my user id let's take this here okay and for headers i'm gonna send my token bearer and my token let's copy this and paste here right now 
we can go to the body and change some properties here I will choose row and JSON and I just want to change my email that's all I will say email or username doesn't matter and it's gonna be llama dev let's try I hope everything is okay I will send 404 that because <laughs> we didn't indicate our users router let's come here first export and then define in the index.js I will say module exports and it's gonna be router and in the index file let's import it first it's gonna be user root users here and I can use this new root I will copy this and paste when I go to the users endpoint it's gonna call this root okay let's check again by the way did we verify our token ah uh, no I should call my verify function first to get this request user verify let's import it I will say const verify and it's gonna be require verify token okay let's try I will send okay let's check here in the DB as you can see username is Lamadev but here we still see the previous one that's because our function here find an update we should indicate here another config after setting new user I'm gonna say new and true so it's gonna update first and it's gonna return new user not previous one let's try again I will change here again llama dot dev I will send as you can see username llama dot dev absolutely so let's try to change our token I'm gonna add here one so it's not valid anymore I'm sending as you can see token is not valid if I don't send any token you are not authenticated perfect it works awesome so after this updating process others will be easier I think I will just copy this uh, for delete method I'm gonna paste here and let's delete this method it's gonna be delete again we are gonna take ID and it's gonna check whether we are the owner or we are the admin and uh, we don't need to we are just deleting we don't need any user here because we are not gonna return any user actually let's delete them inside and this time it's gonna be find by ID and delete okay I can write here my ID request params and ID and after that I can write here user has been deleted if there is an error it's gonna return this error if we are not the owner if the token is valid but we are not the owner or we are not admin we are gonna send this error but this time it's gonna be delete there's a typo here I think update okay and uh, for the get method we can get any user I will say get and I'm gonna write here find and user ID and this time we don't have to verify any token that because everyone can reach the information of a user just username email created and updated that it's not important so I can delete here it's gonna be just try and catch block and I will say find by ID and after that it's gonna return us this user of course we didn't define let's define const user but remember what we did here it's gonna return all the information to us but we don't want to do this let's copy this information 
You don't want to see the password. So basically, I'm going to just send this info. And for all users, OK, we can see a single user. But if we are not admin, there is no sense to see all users. So I'm going to copy this delete method. And here, I'm going to verify again. And let's delete this. We are going to see all users only if we are an admin. I will say get and there will be no ID. We are going to fetch all users and I can use here a query also. If we don't send any query, it's just going to return all users. If we say, for example, question mark new users and true, it's going to return only last 10 users. It's really easy. So how I'm going to do this, let's say const query. So to take this query, it's going to be request query and the key, which is, let's say, new or new users. OK, so if we are an admin const users here and I'm going to write here a condition. I will say if there is a query, which means if we are fetching only new users, it's going to be await and users, sorry, user model. And I will say find is going to find all users. And I'm going to say just limit 10. So basically, it's going to fetch only last 10 users. So if it's not, if there is no query, we are going to fetch all users. Await user and find. And that's all. After that, we can send these users. And here, maybe you are not allowed. To see all users. And what about these stats? For example, let's try them actually. We tried update, we can try deleting, but actually we don't have that users. We can try here registering. Okay, let's write here localhost and register. It's gonna be post. And body, row, and JSON. Let's write here username, llama1, email, llama1 at gmail.com, and password is going to be 123. Okay. I'm registering. OK, let's change them to I'm going to do this quickly. OK, I created 11 more. And let's come here. It was our update. Let's come here and create new collection. Actually, it's going to be Netflix. And request name will be update, but create first, of course. And it's going to be login. And let's save this as register. OK, let's create new one. I will copy this name. And this time we are going to delete. But before, let's make our account admin. This is our account. I will edit this and his admin will be true. OK, let's log in again. That because in the previous JWT is admin property is false. So let's open here my collection and login. And body, my email and password I will send. And this is my 
new access token. I will copy this and here I will say users and let's write here our JWT headers token and it's gonna be bearer and my token and here I should write any user ID let's check here and delete this last one I'm sorry guys electricity was cut off during the storm there was a really strong storm here so we were deleting user I think let's choose this user ID this llama 11 and I'm gonna paste here delete methods our token I hope it was admin token let's come here we just logged in I think okay let's try if it's not we can try again I'm gonna send okay user has been deleted let's check here and last one is llama 10 perfect so I'm gonna copy this and create new request here it's gonna be let's check what we have delete and get method I'm gonna write find and user ID I will say find it's gonna be get method we don't have to write any header it's open for everyone and I'm gonna choose let's choose this one and I'm sending perfect and for all users I'm not gonna write anything if I send it's gonna be an error that because we don't have any token I will open here header and token and my value is bearer and I have to log in again I will send and I'm gonna take this access token okay I will paste here let's try again as you can see all users are here if I use new query here I'm gonna say question mark and new is gonna be true if I do that it's gonna fetch all these users again because we already have 10 users if I do this for example just two I will save and I'm gonna try again as you can see there are only two users but there is a problem here it just fetches not last two document it's just fetching first one and second one to avoid this I can write here one more thing I will say sort and here I'm gonna say ID minus one in this case it's gonna fetch the latest data I'm gonna send as you can see 10 and 9 perfect if I do this just one it's gonna fetch first two elements okay let's make this minus again and here let's do this 10 okay perfect and last one is user stats as I said we are gonna fetch total users per month so I'm gonna say router and it's gonna be get method and I'm gonna say here stats and async function I will write my request and response and I'm gonna create my function so we are gonna fetch I forgot here comma so we are gonna fetch user statistics in last year to do that I'm gonna write here const today and I'm gonna create a new date new date so it's gonna be today and what about last year to find this I'm gonna write here const last year and if I say today and set full year and if I subtract just one year from today I'm gonna get a year before so I will say minus one so it's gonna give us last year so I can use this in my condition 
But before I'm going to create a months array, it's going to include our months. So I will just copy and paste here. I don't want to waste your time. After that, I can find total users per month. So I will say try and catch. In any case, I'm going to send an error. It's going to be 500. And I'm going to say JSON error. OK. To find total users per month, I should aggregate them first. For example, for January, for February, it's going to aggregate our documents and assign for each const, let's say data, and await for my user model and aggregate. There is a useful function for that. To find to month, I will say project, and I'm going to write month. And I'm going to use month function here. So it's going to look at our created at date. So for example, if it's January, it's going to return as 1. If it's February, it's going to be 2. So it works like that. So I can use this month. So after that, I'm going to write group. So it's going to basically group our documents. If you are aggregating, you should write here ID. And its ID will be our month here. One, two, three, something like that. Let's write month. And what I want to return here, it's going to be total. And if I write here sum and one, it's going to return total users per month. It might be a little bit confusing, I know, but more practice you make in the MongoDB, you will understand better. So it's not going to be curly brackets, by the way, it's going to be just array. Okay. And after that, I'm going to return my data. I will say response, status will be 200, and I will say JSON this data. Let's see. It's going to be users and stats. Let's try. As you can see, ID is 7, which is July, and total record is alone. Let's change here one of them. For example, this last one. I will come here. This created at date, as you can see, it's 7, which is July. Let's make this May. I will update. Let's see again. I will send. As you can see, in the May, there is only one record. Let's change this. 6. And again, 6. It's going to be two records. Let's see. I will send again. May 1, June 2, and July 8. Perfect. It works. So this function belongs MongoDB. For example, if I write here year, it's going to return the year which we are living. As you can see, 2021 and total 11. Perfect. So we finished our user's route. Let's come here. We can close this. And here, I'm going to open movies. Of course, we can copy and paste. Module export. I can delete them and just leave one. We are not going to need any crypto. And I can change this model to movie. 
and we are gonna use verify okay first one will be create we are gonna create new movie so it's gonna be post method we don't need any id here so we are gonna verify our token and only if we are an admin we can reach this data let's actually delete here and here i will say you are not allowed that's all i think it's enough you can write here you are not allowed to add movie or something like that whatever you want so let's create new movie here i will say const new movie and it's gonna be new um, movie model and inside i'm gonna say request and um, body so whatever we give inside our body it's gonna take this and after we are gonna try to save inside our database so i will say try catch if there is an error we are gonna send it and json error okay let's save this movie and after that it's gonna return us a movie let's say saved movie actually and it's gonna be await and new movie and save I can send this saved movie as response I will say status 201 or just 200 and json movie saved movie sorry so how I'm gonna update this movie oops I will copy this and here so I will write here id and of course if we are using update it should be put let's delete this and right now I'm gonna write here updated movie remember what we did in the user root we just used user and right now we are gonna use movie and we are gonna say find by id and update and I'm gonna provide my id request body sorry params and id so it's gonna take this id and try to find this movie and after finding it's gonna set new data inside so i will say set and new request body and remember we should write here another configuration it's gonna be new and true otherwise it's not gonna turn our updated movie here we are gonna keep seeing the old one okay right now i can send this it's not 201 we are not adding anything okay that's all so i will copy this again for the delete once you write one of them the others as you can see really easy i'm just changing these names these methods it's gonna be delete id again and right now it's not gonna return anything we are just gonna delete by id sorry find by id and delete and i can delete here okay so i will say the movie has been deleted so far so good we are going really fast so we can get any movie here i will say get but in the application remember even if we are not an admin we can watch movies we can see the informations so i'm not gonna use this if here and as i'm just gonna be authenticated user that's enough so i will say const movie and i will say find by id and it's gonna be request params and id and after finding this movie 
we can send as response okay so what else we can do we can fetch all movies but in the application remember as you can see there's a featured movie here and how I'm gonna choose this movie I can come here and choose a random movie I will say get random and I'm gonna write here random and one more thing we should consider and this is series or movies and when we click this button we are gonna see series lists here and also our featured movie will be series so I can use query here so let's say type and it's gonna be request query and it's gonna be type so for example when we write here type and series it's gonna return us a random series if we don't write anything or if we write just movie it's gonna return us a movie so let's delete here and let's write our condition I will say if type is series it's gonna find a random series here actually let's create here a variable it's gonna be let so we can change this inside our condition so I will write here movie equals await and movie I'm gonna aggregate again and array and I'm gonna find series first to do that if I write here match and is series is gonna be true because remember our movie model here and there is a series as you can see it's boolean and by default it's false and one more thing just give me one random one so to do that I will write here sample and size just one it's gonna find whole series and just give us a sample perfect so what if we don't give any type here or if we give type movies so this time it's gonna be just movies it's that easy let's copy this actually and I will write here as and paste here this time we are gonna find is series false it's gonna be movie and give us one sample okay so after finding our sample we can return this response status will be 200 and JSON movie but I'm not sure it returns an object or array let's see actually I will copy this and new one localhost our API and this time it's gonna be movie of course we should create first so I'm gonna write here post and headers token and my key bearer oops we already have okay and inside our body I'm gonna choose row and JSON and let's create a movie first one will be title let's say Superman actually let's open our model here what we have I don't remember all of them okay description I'm gonna write here test description uh, we are gonna have image I can actually copy and paste this image of course image address so I'm gonna paste this and finally it was really long I didn't expect this <laughs> so I will say is serious and it's gonna be false actually we don't have to write this because by default it's false but anyway so I'm gonna send 
and error. <laughs> of course, I forgot again writing here my new router. So it's gonna be movie root. And here it's gonna be oops, movies and movie root. Okay. Let's try again. I'm sending 404 again. Of course, it's movies. Okay, perfect. Let's create more movies. Right now, let's create some series. I'm gonna say flash. And this series will be true. Let's create. I'm gonna create again 10 series here. Okay, perfect. So right now, let's come here. What we have, for example, get method. Let's copy this ID. And I'm gonna paste here. If I choose get here and send, something is wrong. Ah, I write here too late. I forgot to change. Okay, it's gonna be get and let's try again. As you can see, it's here. But if we do this, there will be a problem here. By the way, it's get also. Because when we write here random, it's gonna consider this random word as id. That because after slash, we are using id in this router. So instead of just id, I will say find. Okay, so let's find random movie. I will say here random. And I'm not writing anything. Let's send. As you can see, Superman. I'm sending again. Superman 10, 8, 10. So if I write here, type series. As you can see, it returns as flash. 9, 10, 6, 3. Perfect. It looks awesome. So we have get random, get, update, delete, create. Maybe we can get all users. Let's copy this. Actually, we should be an admin. So I will copy here. And I'm going to write get all. It's going to be get method again. And I'm going to delete this ID. So if we are admin, we are going to find all users. Sorry, movies. And after that, we are going to send these movies. Of course, we don't have movies here. Let's create const movies. Okay. And I'm going to just save. And I will send... As you can see, all movies are here. But I wanna see here most recent. So if I write here reverse, it's gonna reverse this array and send us the last movies. Let's try. I'm sending. And as you can see, last ones. And right now, we can create our list routes. I will just copy this and for lists, let's paste here and I'm gonna delete them, only leave just one, it's gonna be create. So what else I can do? We can delete it or we can get lists for the home page. For example, when we refresh the page, when we enter our application, it's going to fetch 10 lists, for example, and show us in the home page. When I click the series, it's going to fetch 10 series. When I click this, it's going to fetch 10 movies. So we are going to handle that. But first, let's create list here. And this time it's going to be new list and new 
list model. Let's change this model also. It's gonna be list. Okay, and here we are gonna save this list. And I'm gonna send this list here. And let's try. So I'm gonna open new tab here and localhost. This time it's gonna be lists. And I will say post. Of course, I need JWT token here. Let's come to login. Where is our login? Okay, here. I will copy this again. And paste. Token. Of course, bearer. Okay, what about body? Let's come to the VS Code. Before doing anything, I just wanna import my router. That because I always forget. So I will change this. It's gonna be list. And let's copy this. And here it's gonna be list root. And the endpoint will be lists. Okay. So I'm gonna open my model what we have here let's check title type genre and content i will say title let's say best horror movies and type will be movie and genre it's gonna be horror and finally, my content, which is my movie list. So let's check here. I will refresh the page. And lists. Sorry, movies. And I'm going to choose some movies here. This is the first one and actually I can give same movie. I don't want to just copy and paste all those movies. Actually we can write test truths here to create automatically but anyway I just started and I will continue. Okay. We have 10 movies here. So let's create. I will send, as you can see, 201 created. And I'm gonna create other lists. Best comedy movies, for example. And I will change here. There will be same movies again, doesn't matter. And let's say amazing just movies. Let's say action. I have some crime movies. So I'm gonna create more. So let's create some series here. I have some crime series. They should be, of course, serious, but it's not important for now. Important thing is our list. So let's send comedy. And I'm gonna multiply this. So it doesn't have to be 10 movies. I said we are gonna fetch 10 lists here. But if there is no 10 list, it's gonna automatically fetch the maximum list here. For example, we have just five or six lists in the series. So it's gonna fetch just five or six. So it's not important. So let's come here and let's try to delete this list. It's gonna be delete method and our list ID. We are gonna be admin again. 
and I'm gonna try to delete my list but let's delete here it's gonna be list and find by ID and delete and I'm gonna provide my request params and ID and after that I can send my response the list has been deleted oh, okay I will change here and we don't need this delete anymore and we are gonna fetch all these lists so remember to fetching this we don't have to be admin so I'm not gonna use this condition so I will say router and get method is gonna be just main endpoint and it's gonna be verify of course we should be authenticated and after that I will say async function and request and response right now we have three options as I said for home page we are gonna take all lists and we are gonna fetch just 10 of them inside these lists it can be series or movies doesn't matter it will be random again we are gonna aggregate and when I click series it's gonna fetch only series when I click movies it's gonna fetch only movies but there is one more thing remember when we click one of them there is a select button here and we can choose any genre we should consider them also so I need two queries here so first one will be type query request and query and type and one more it's gonna be genre query And I'm gonna create here an empty list. Let's say list. And after our conditions, we are gonna push all data inside this list. Try and catch. And I'm gonna send my error. 500 JSON, my error here. And I'm gonna write three conditions here. First one, if there is a type query, which means we click series or movies here, we are gonna do something. If there is no type query, it means we are in the home page, we can fetch random lists. So I will say else, it's gonna be list await and list model and I will say again aggregate remember what we have done we just get some samples it's gonna return us random samples so I will say sample and size will be 10 so what if we have type here sorry it's not type it's type query so I will have one more condition here do we have genre here or not? If we have, we are gonna do something else. I will say genre query. I will say list is gonna be await again and aggregate. And I'm gonna write here match condition. Of course, this sample will be the same. It's gonna take 10. And additionally, I'm gonna write here match function. So I'll say match and type should be type query. And genre should be genre query. So for example, we choose movie and just crime. So it's gonna look to type it's gonna be movie and genre is gonna be crime and it's gonna find all these movies and send us just 10 of them 10 random lists if it's serious and comedy it will be the same so what if we have type series or movies but we don't have any genre which means we are in the home page of series page or movies page let's do something else here and this time list 
it's going to be await again and list aggregate let's copy and paste this but this time we don't have any genre let's try lists is going to be get so let's check here okay get and i'm gonna send 500 we didn't send our data yes we didn't let's write here finally status will be 200 and send our list array I will save and let's see again I'm sending okay again oops I have typo here aggregate and others are okay let's try one more time okay perfect it returns 10 lists here so let's check what we have first we have series and it's comedy movie crime movie comedy serious comedy as you can see it's random and it's mixed so if i write here type and it's going to be only serious at send as you can see serious comedy serious comedy we don't have any horror i think it's only comedy if i write here movie we have different genre here we can try as you can see movie crime movie crime comedy horror there is no series have some so if i write here and genre and it's gonna be only comedy and send awesome i will write crime for example crime 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 and crime awesome it works perfectly so in this case we finished our api we are ready to implement our client site so we can use axios and fetch our data we can delete update our documents fetch our data and finally it's gonna be an complete man application so right now let's close all of these windows and close this api and open our client site in the source folder and in our main js file which is app.jsx as you can see we just return home page right now we are gonna use react router dom we are gonna indicate our routes and according to the link we are gonna connect to our other components so let's do that i'm gonna open new tab here and cd client and i'm gonna install react router dom package yarn add react router dom let's come here and open new tab and see what we have in the react router dom okay this is the documentation as you can see there are some components here and we are going to be using switch component and under we are going to write our roots for example when we go to about it's going to call the about component when we go to users url it's going to return users component it's going to work something like that so let's copy this and i'm going to paste here and switch root component and let's paste here okay right now i'm going to provide my urls for example for home page i'm going to call my home component here home page so let's write here home if we go to movies for example we are going to call again home but this type as you remember in our pages and home page i'm opening and for this featured components let's come here and open featured as you can see there's a type prop when it's movie we are gonna see movies title and genre 
when it's series, we are gonna see series, title, and its genres. So if I write here type movie, for example, let's see. Oops, we didn't write router. Yeah, we forgot this. We should cover this first with router. And uh, we don't need that. Okay, let's see. As you can see, it's not the home page anymore, it's movies page. If I change this, right now we are in the series page. Okay, perfect. So how I'm gonna decide whether we are in the home page or movies page or series page. So I will delete this and I will take as prop. So I'm gonna write here type and it's gonna equal type. So in this case, we should indicate our type in the main JS file. If our path is movies, our type will be movies. And I will duplicate this and for series page, we are gonna go to series. But there will be a problem here. Let's go to the movies. Right now we are supposed to go to the movies page, but we are still in the home page that because that because when we go to the slash path, this root decides that we are in the home page, but actually we are not. To prevent this issue, I shall try it here exact. In this case, if we are in the home page, it's gonna go to the home component. If we write here something else, it's not our exact path anymore we can go to the other components. So let's write here again, I will refresh. Right now, while we are in the series page, let's come here, featured, as you can see, it's movie, it should be movies. Okay, so if we go to the series, we are in the series page, perfect. And for the other pages, we have only watch actually watch page let's come here and write here watch and we are gonna call our watch component let's see i will write here watch and we are in the watch component perfect right now let's handle these links if i go to the top bar component sorry it was now bar i think yeah as you can see there is no link I'm gonna call my link component from React Router DOM. Okay, it's not here. I'm gonna import manually. So I will cover this and let's import our link component from React Router DOM. I will say import link from React Router DOM. Let's indicate our URL here. It's gonna go to series page. So I will do the same thing for movies. It's gonna go to the movies page. Let's cover this. Okay, let's see. I'm clicking. We are going to series. I'm clicking this one. We are going to movies. But as you can see, there are some styles here. It works like anchor tag in the HTML. So it has some default style. To prevent this, I can write here class, sorry, class name, and it's gonna be link. I'll paste here also. And uh, for our global CSS, app CSS, I'm gonna write here my class name. So it's gonna affect all over this application. Our links can be in the top bar or featured component or list component, doesn't matter, we can use this link class name. So I will say color inherit. So we basically say inherit from your parent. And one more thing, text decoration, no. Let's see. As you can see, there is no underline anymore. And our color is our parent's color, which is white. Okay, so it works perfectly. 
and for this home page i can use also let's close here and i'm gonna copy and paste here this time we are gonna go to the home page home series movies perfect if you remember we have two more pages we have login page and register page let's add them also but before i'm gonna create a variable here const user is gonna be true of course it's not the implementation of our login system but for now to decide which component we are gonna use i just created user here if we have a user we can go to the home page or any other pages if we don't have any user we are gonna go to the register or login page so let's copy this and i will paste and register and login we can delete them actually let's move this at the beginning so i'm gonna call my components register and login okay right now i can write my condition i will cover this home component and i'm gonna write my condition if there is user we can go to the home page if there is no user we are gonna go to the register page or i can use redirect component that's right here instead of link redirect and we can redirect our users anywhere any path so if i say to and register let's see right now we have user and i'm refreshing we are in the home page if i make this false oops false by the way it's gonna be slash of course let's see right now we are in the register page if i try to go to the home page we are still in the register page okay perfect so i can do the same thing here for the login page and register page so i will do the same thing for here but this time if we don't have a user we are gonna go to the register page if we have we are gonna go to the home page so i will copy this and paste here this time it's gonna be login page okay right now let's go to the home page of course we should do this true okay and for other pages we can do the same thing or basically i can put my condition here i'm not gonna redirect anywhere i will just say if there is a user you can see these pages okay there is a warning here that because we are using multiple components without any parent so you can write here any div or you can use react fragments i will open this tag and close here as you can see right now it works perfectly so everything is okay right now for this app jsx of course we are going to implement our login and register system right now i can fetch my movie lists for home page for series and movies so let's close this and here i'm gonna use use state for my lists i will say const list sorry it's gonna be lists because there are multiple lists here and i will say set lists and i'm gonna use use state and for the initial state it's gonna be empty array we don't have any list right now but when i refresh the page or enter our application we are gonna fetch our lists so how i'm gonna do this i'm gonna use use effect hook so i will write my function here it's gonna be const get random lists it's gonna be async function that because we are gonna fetch data from our api and inside i will write my try catch block if there is an error we are just gonna console log we are not handling any errors and for the try block let's call our api 
to make a request we need a tool of course you can use javascript fetch but there is a more useful library so we are gonna use it it's gonna be yarn add and axios okay ready so how we are gonna connect with our api remember here in the index.js our port is 8800 so we can use this proxy how we are gonna do this we are gonna go to the packet json in the client side and here at the ending i will write proxy and we are gonna use our api address which is http localhost and our port and remember our endpoint it's api so we are gonna use this url so in this case we don't have to write this url again and again we are just gonna use this proxy and make our api calls i will say const response because it's gonna return us a response so await i'm gonna use my axios and it's gonna be get method remember our url let's come here our api and routes and lists as you can see we have a get method and this is the url we can give type or genre and it's gonna return us 10 random lists so let's call it it's gonna be lists by the way i should import this axios okay i will copy this and import here import axios from axios okay and as i said we can use any query here so what i will say here is writing my queries so instead of quotes i'm gonna use backtick and i'm gonna write my condition so i will say if there is a type it's gonna be my query type and equals my type which is here and we can use one more use state here and provide our genre let's make it null at the beginning we don't have any i will say genre let's use and here and one more condition i will say if there is a genre use genre query and it's gonna be our genre it looks a little bit complex but we are gonna use our lists url and if we have type series or movies we are gonna add our query remember what we have done in our api and if we have a genre we are gonna add one more query which is our genre okay and after getting response we are gonna set our list and we are gonna use instead of this list component so set lists and it's gonna be response and data before setting anything if you want to see what we have in the response we can just basically write console log and response so let's see of course i should call this function here otherwise it's not gonna work and here i'm gonna write my dependency and what we have here we have genre or type so basically whenever we change our type or genre it's gonna automatically call this use effect and it's gonna get random list and console log this response so let's try i will save and let's open our console here and let's refresh the page there is an error i think okay it was not i was expecting error because of our token because we don't have any but there is a silly mistake here let's fix that so i will change this condition and i will move this here of course it can be easier solution but it just came my mind and if it works we don't have any problem i don't want to waste time so let's refresh and okay still problem that means we have a problem with our proxy let's open our package json again 
Okay, I forgot here multi slashes. I will save and let's start our application again. Okay, let's open our console again. And this is what I was expecting. As you can see, we are not authenticated. So how I'm gonna add my JSON web token here. After our request, this is our URL, I should add here some configuration. So it's gonna be headers. And inside headers, remember what's our key? It's token. And after token, I'm gonna write my bearer and token. Of course, we are gonna implement our JSON web token after login process, but we don't have any login operation right now, so I'm gonna use from postman. Don't worry, we are gonna handle later, but for now, let's log in and take our JWT and paste here. So let's come here and log in again. So I'm gonna take this access token. Okay, let's see again. I will refresh the page. Right now we are authenticated and it returns a response. As you can see, there are some configs, headers, text, but important thing is our data here and it returns our random lists. I have some crime movies, I have some comedy series. As you can see, this is movie, this is series. I have some crime movies for something like that. So I can use this list and set my list here. Let's delete this console log. So instead of writing these lists, let's delete three of them and write here our lists. I will say lists dot map and for each list, I'm gonna call my list component and I will pass my list. I will save. If I go to the home page, as you can see right now we have 10 lists here. It was 4. So it works. Of course we didn't change them. We are gonna change. So let's go to the list component. Here. And I can take this list as prop and let's change this title. Instead of continue to watch, I will say list.title. As you can see, they have changed. Awesome. Right now, I can update movies here. Let's scroll down and for list items, I can delete them and I can use again map here. So I can take my list and I will say map. And for each item, I'm gonna call this list item component. It's really easy. So instead of writing index 0, 1, 2, I can use index here. Let's say i or index, doesn't matter. And I'm gonna pass here. It's exactly the same thing. And additionally, I can pass my item, which is my movie. So we are gonna use these movies. Let's come here. List is not an array. Yeah, that's because it's not list. It contains our title, type, and content, as you remember. And this is our content. This is our movie list. Let's try again. As you can see, there is no error. Right now, we can go to the list item component and update our item here. Let's go to the list item. We have index and also item. And right now, instead of trailer, and right now I can delete this trailer we already have right now and let's start changing them. First of all, it's our image. It's gonna be item.image. And for trailer, it's gonna be item.trailer. And we have duration here, item duration and item limit. and year item dot year and this is our description item dot description and finally our genre 
let's see okay there is something wrong here we can see them index item we didn't pass it okay index item so i will console log and let's see what we have there i will say item and i'm gonna open my console oh i made just silly mistake that because our content list just contains our movie ids so basically this item is just an id so we have to fetch our data i just literally forgot about that i'm sorry so it's not a problem it's easy we already know how to do this i'm gonna create use effect hook here and let's create our function it's gonna be get movie of course const and it's gonna be async function and i'm gonna write my try catch block error and console log this error and here i will say const response we already done that so it's gonna be easier i think await and i'm gonna use axios and get method i'm gonna use my movies endpoint and remember what we are doing we are using find endpoint and finally our movie id which is our item let's import this I'm gonna write my configuration again. Let's come here, our home page. I'm gonna copy this header and paste here. Of course, comma. So after taking response, let's create here one more use state and update our movies. I will say movie and it's gonna be set movie at the beginning it's gonna be just null or empty object and after oops after response we can update this i will say set movie and it's gonna be our response and data let's call our function here get movie and our dependencies it's gonna be item whenever we change the item we are gonna fire this use effect again I will shrink this a little bit and close here. Okay, it's better, I think. Right now, instead of item, let's change them. Item, item trailer is gonna be movie. Actually, let's copy this and paste like that. Let's try again. This time, as you can see, we have movies and when i hover limits year description and genre and this is our video perfect it works of course they are same informations and images we are gonna change them by the way when we hover and click this actually click anything inside this component i want to go to the watch page and i wanna pass this movie so how I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna use link here. Above this div, I will say link. Okay, from React Router DOM, perfect. And I'm gonna cover my div. And I will say to watch. But if I do that, I cannot pass my item here, my movie. So there is one more usage and it's really useful instead of equal and our path i'm gonna create an object here and path name will be watch and i will pass my movie movie equals movie of course it's not equals it's object so it's gonna be colon okay let's try i'm hovering and clicking and we are going to watch page perfect so i can take this movie which we sent here oops it's movie and after that we can use this video 
let's go to the watch page. So how I'm gonna reach this location? To do that, there is a useful React hook. Let's see, const location, it's gonna be use location hook. So let's see what we have here. I will say console log and location. I will open my console. As you can see, there is an object, a path name, and our movie. Of course, it's old page. I didn't refresh. It's still movie and R. And we are going to use this movie. So if I write here movie.video instead of this link, it's going to return our actual movie. I will say movie. Of course, we didn't take this movie. Let's take from our location. I will say const movie equals location dot movie. So I will say movie dot video. Let's save and let's go to the home page. And I'm hovering and clicking. As you can see, our movie is still here. Perfect. And I can add link here for this home before this back div. I will say link from React Router DOM and I will cover this div. And finally, I will say to uh, my home page. So I can click right now and we are going to home page. Perfect. So what else we have? We have this featured movie. Let's go to the featured component. Right now we are going to fetch random movie because remember uh, in our API where is our API here and uh, for movies as you remember we have get random method we can pass our type let's do that I will use use state here const let's say content for example and I will say set content And it's going to be use state, and in the initial state, it's going to be empty object. Let's use again use effect. I will open my dependency for now, it's going to be empty. We are going to fill this later. Const get random content. And it's going to be async function and try catch block console log my error and here I will say const response and I'm going to use again await and axios it was get method and my URL is movies and random I can use my query here it's going to be type and equals if we have any type let's make this back tick okay if we have any type we are going to pass this as query if we don't have it's going to just take a random movie or series for home page so our dependency will be type in this case and let's call our function and after getting response I'm gonna set my content set content response and data oops response and data okay right now I can use this content it's gonna be content.image and remember this is our title I mean title image so it's gonna be image title and description and that's all I think of course I didn't write my header here let's copy again and paste here after my URL 
let's see okay there is a problem here let's see what we have i'll say console log and my content let's open up our console and ah okay this is an array that because remember the sample sent us an array not object so instead of response and data i will say response data and first element right now it works perfectly this is our image this is our title it looks really strange and our description if i go to the series it's gonna be same of course that because our all documents are same so it really looks strange we have only one image and even our title so i'm gonna stop the video and change them a little bit so it's gonna be more beautiful and after that we are gonna make our admin panel okay right now we are gonna create our admin application if you go to the Lama Dev GitHub repository. You can search for React Admin. It's here, and we are gonna use this application. If you didn't watch this video, I highly recommend you to watch first. If you care about design part, if you don't, you can directly just clone this repository. So I'm gonna go to the my application, and here I'm gonna create another folder. It's gonna be admin, and I'm going to admin folder here and I'm gonna clone this repository so how I'm gonna do this you can fork this whole repository and work on it or if you want to clone you can come here and choose this link and after that you can clone only single branch which is react admin so how you are gonna do this you can write here git clone single branch and we are gonna write here our branch which is react admin and i'm gonna paste my repository link and finally i'm gonna download it inside this folder which is admin and it's gonna clone and it's done as you can see they are here our source folder public folder so how we are gonna import our libraries only thing you should do is writing here yarn okay it's ready so if i start this application it's gonna start on port number 3000 but our client server run on 3000 also so i should change one of them let's change this admin one you can go to the package json and you can write here your port number but it depends on your computer if you are using mac it's gonna be different if you are using windows different type to prevent this you can just basically create here .env file and right here just port and let's say 4000 and after saving and let's start our application as you can see it works on 4000 but there's a problem here our app css let's check source app okay it should be lowercase here and here app css okay let's see again as you can see this is our application it's really nice so what i'm gonna do is changing this user analytics first so let's go to the home page pages and home okay as you can see we have featured info and chart and these widgets here new members latest transactions of course we are not gonna implement any payment method like normal netflix it will be stay like that maybe in the future we can update our application we can add payment methods we can count our sales our costs why not <laughs> so let's take care of this analytics if you watch this admin template video we are fetching these users these numbers from our dummy data here it's totally fake data right now instead of this we are going to fetch this data from our 
API. So firstly, let's create our months first. It will be a little bit different, but you will understand. So I will come here and I'm going to create my months. Const months and it's going to be an array and I will just copy and paste them. Just first three letters like that. And after that, I'm going to use a use state. Let's close here. So I will say const user stats and set user stats. And it's going to be use state. And in the initial state, it's going to be empty array. Just remember our API. Our API here and roots. And finally, users. As you remember, we have user stats here and we are returning month number and user number. By the way, we didn't implement this months array. I forgot to lighting this. Instead of that array, we are gonna use our array. That because it depends on our client site. Maybe I want to use just three letters here, maybe full name, maybe just month index. So let's fetch our data. Remember what we are doing. As always, I'm going to use use effect. Let's import this. Okay, right now I will say const get stats. It's going to be an async function. And I will say const axios. And it's going to be get method. By the way, we didn't install Axios for our admin site. So I'm going to open new terminal here. And I will go to the admin. And I will say yarn add Axios. By the way, you don't have to create new folder and download this whole application. You can also go to the source folder and copy and paste our admin components. So you can just use one client site and inside you can create admin folder maybe and paste this pages components and you can use like that just without creating any other application. It really doesn't matter. Okay, so let's import this Axios. I will say import Axios from Axios. Oops, wrong. Okay, so I'm gonna write here my endpoint. By the way, we didn't provide our proxy here. Let's do the same thing as we did before. It's gonna be proxy and HTTP localhost and 8800 and API. Okay, so I can use it. I will say users and stats is going to be my endpoint and I'm going to write my headers and token it's going to be let's copy paste here our access token and it's going to be bearer and my token okay by the way I forgot writing here const response and await axios okay after that let's set our user stats by the way i forgot writing here try catch block catch error if we have an error we are just gonna console lock oops it should be here okay so after taking my response i will say set user stats and it's going to be response and data and let's call our function here and let's see what we have console log user stats and i'm going to my application let's close here actually okay and as you can see we have an array and June, July and May. And there are total users.
by the way, we have warning here. Let's look at that. For our table here, we are using table. It says you should add T body for your table body. Let's add that. That was our component. Let's come here. It was widget large, I think. Yes, it is. And here I'm going to create my T body. And I'm going to close after. Sorry, before table. Oh, it's pretty long. <laughs> okay, let's see again. I will refresh. Okay, perfect. We have our data. Right now, using this mount array, let's close here. This array, we can pass this data to our chart here. So let's do that. Instead of setting data like that, I will just delete this and for each data, I will say response data and map. And for each data, each item, I'm gonna set my stats again and again. So I will say set user stats and previous state. I will say take this previous stats, don't change anything, but add one more thing, which is name months array and item dot id minus one that because this is our array and for each item this is our id value is six which is june but in our array if you look at here it's element zero one two three four five it should be six but it's fifth element that because of we are using array so that's why I write here minus one. So our name will be months fifth element, which is June. So one more thing I will say new user or total user, doesn't matter. It's going to be item dot total, which is here. So let's see right now. By the way, we have dependency here. It's going to be months but it's never changing. Let's come here. As you can see, there is a problem because it's constant. We can say to react, it's not gonna change in any case. So we can just memoize this array. How we are gonna do this is gonna be use memo hook. Let's import. And it's gonna return our array. I'm gonna move this here. And finally, we should write here any dependency is going to be empty array, which is we don't have any dependency. It's not going to change in any case. Okay. I will refresh. And as you can see, we have name June and new user to July 8, May 1. Absolutely. So I can use this in my chart. Let's come here. Oh. I made a mistake in that because it's not our home page. I should write them here. Okay, let's copy and paste them. I will copy here everything. I forgot that we are in the app.js. And I will paste here. And let's copy this libraries and paste here. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. Okay, it's exactly the same thing. Nothing is going to change here, as you can see. And right now, I can use my stats. Let's copy this and we can clean this console log. And for our chat, instead of our dummy data, I'm going to pass my new data. And title will be user analytics and data key will be new user remember our key here let's see right now and as you can see two one and eight by the way it shows me here that because we change our users in our db by manually 
in the normal case it's not gonna show like that but if you want to we can sort our array again in any case so how we are gonna do this i will come here before this map i will say sort actually we can do this here let's create maybe const stats list and it's gonna be response block data and we are gonna sort by our item id so how we are gonna do this i'm gonna get two instance and sort by their ids if you wanna we can check here you can understand better i think as you can see if we have just numbers when we say sort it's gonna sort automatically but we have an object so how we are gonna compare them as you can see our situation is like that so it basically takes two element inside two instances and it's comparing their value inside this object smallest to greatest so we will do the same thing let's actually copy here uh, for our sort method it's gonna be a dot id and b dot id and instead of response and data i'm gonna use this array let's see right now as you can see may june and july and as i said before if you are not changing anything in the mongodb by manually you don't have to do this it's already gonna send you data in normal order okay anyway it works perfect so let's fetch our new users i'm gonna go to the small widget here widget small let's open up and i'm gonna close them okay right now i'm gonna do the same thing i'm gonna fetch my data and set my state and i'm gonna use my new data so i will say const new users set new users it's gonna be your state and of course i should import this okay and it's gonna be empty array let's create our use effect quickly okay and i'm gonna say const get new users it's gonna be async function and i will say const response and axios dot get it's gonna be users endpoint and if you do this it's gonna fetch all users but if you write here our query which is new and true it's gonna return only 10 recent users so i will import this axios okay i forgot to try catch and await i will do this catch error and console log it's gonna be await and my header here soon we are gonna handle our authentication and after that we don't have to write this token again and again we are gonna just take this from our current user okay after our response let's set our data it's gonna be response and data and after that i'm gonna call my function get new users let's come here and choose this new users right now i can delete these unnecessary items i will just leave one here okay let's use our map i will say dot map and for each user i'm gonna call this component this ally okay for image i will write here a logic i will say user dot profile picture if there is no profile picture if it's just empty string i'm gonna write 
just default avatar so let's search for it for example netflix avatar <laughs> oh it shows this movie so let's choose this okay let's copy this and paste copy image address and I'm gonna paste here okay and we don't have any job title I can delete here and instead of Anna Keller I'm gonna write user dot username it's gonna look a little bit strange but it's what it is okay it's not here let's look at our console it says unauthorized So there is something wrong with this token. It's gonna be headers, not header. Let's see again. As you can see, our users are here. Perfect. But I said last 10 users, but it will be five I think here. Let's go to do our API and users roots here and stats get all okay it's gonna be five i will refresh again okay awesome here is gonna be same and let's take care of our movies if you remember our admin design video when we click here we are going to products we have fake data here again but i can change this it's not gonna be product it's gonna be just movie let's go to the sidebar and here where is this users products users products it's gonna be movies like that and let's change this sidebar icon it's not gonna be storefront it's gonna be play what was that it was play or not i don't remember i'm not sure let's check actually here material UI icons and I'm gonna write here play okay play arrow or it can be this one it's better writing let's import I will copy this and I'm gonna come here instead of this store I'm gonna paste new one let's check okay perfect so I can change this link also. Let's come here. Not products, it's gonna be movies. But we don't have any root like that. Let's go to the app.js. And here, instead of products, I'm gonna say movies. So it's exactly the same page. If you want to, before starting, let's take care of our context api i was going to use redux but i decided that maybe i can prepare an independent video about redux first maybe a couple hours and after that maybe next project we can handle our state management with redux or redux toolkit just let me know in the comments below but in this video i'm gonna keep doing context api we are gonna delete our elements and update them and fetch them everything by the way you don't have to do this you can use just use effect for each operation but it's not the best practice instead of doing like that we are gonna use context api for our movies and lists and i'm gonna leave users for you to homework it's gonna be the same thing if you handle these movies you are gonna handle these users also it's nothing complex don't worry and for the client side, our Netflix application, we are not using any context API. We don't need them because users almost don't do anything except fetching data. So we don't need that. Maybe only for authentication, for login and register. Anyway, before handling our movies, let's create our authentication context API. Okay, let's create here context folder but before i'm gonna close everything here it looks really messy and i will close my components pages 
and let's create our context and in this context we are gonna have a couple contexts first one will be auth context and movie context and list context and finally user context okay let's care about our authentication first so we are gonna have three files here first one will be our context file and our reducer and our action if you don't know anything about context api you can go to the social media application and find context api timestamp there and you can watch these short parts i think it will be really useful for you i don't want to explain everything again and again for regular visitors so i'm gonna create my context api first i will say context.js actually i will make them capital and my reducer and my actions before creating my context i'm gonna talk about actions first for example when we go to the login page we are gonna enter our username and password and when i click the button login button we are gonna have three stages first one will be starting stage and we are gonna have success stage and failure stage after clicking if everything is okay if my credentials are correct it's gonna end up being successful if there is an error if my credentials are wrong if there is any server error it's gonna end up being failure so let's write these three stages they are gonna be our actions i will say export const and login start and we have to write here any type that because it's gonna recognize which action we are gonna dispatch so i will say login and start of course i should cover them okay so i will duplicate this this one will be login success and this one will be login failure so let's change them also login success and login fail or failure if our login process is successful it's gonna return us a user remember when we login in the postman it's gonna return our user here so we are gonna take this user and update our state so i will write here payload and just send this user to me by the way you can write here error and as payload you can send this error also but if there is an error we will just show something regular nothing specific for each error for example for not found for 500 we don't care about this in this project okay so what about reducers basically it's gonna take our actions and according to these actions it's gonna update our context state so you will understand better right now const authentication reducer or auth reducer we are gonna take state and our actions and we are gonna use switch case block so i will send my action type remember we are sending here for example login start success login failure it's gonna look at this action type and it's gonna decide so we are gonna write here our cases case one if it's login start it's gonna return our new state return and i'm gonna write here my state we didn't write anything here but basically our initial state initial state will be like that our user it's gonna be null at the beginning is fetching 
it's gonna decide whether we are fetching any data from API or not. At the beginning, it's gonna be false. When we click the login button, it's gonna be true until it's gonna get success or failure. And one more thing we are gonna have, it's an error. And it's gonna be false again. After fetching data, if there is an error, error will be true. It's gonna work something like that. Let's delete this and continue it here. So I will say user will be null because we just started. Is fetching will be true and error will be just false. We are at the beginning right now. So for others, login start and login failure and finally we are gonna have default and it's gonna just return our state nothing is gonna change of course object here okay let's change them success and failure okay if we are successful Remember, it's gonna return us a user. So we are gonna update our user with given user like here. So I'm gonna say it's not gonna be null anymore. It's gonna be action.payload. And its fetching will be false. We are not gonna have any error. And in case of error, user will be null. Its fetching will be false because we finish. And error will be true. And that's all. I hope you understood here. Let's export this reducer. I will say export default and my reducer. It can be capital. Let's change this. Okay, perfect. So Let's care about our context. I'm gonna import my reducer. I will say auth reducer uh, from my reducer. Okay. So let's create our initial state. I will say const initial state. And it's gonna be, as I said before, user null is fetching false and error is false and i'm gonna create my context and it's gonna be export we are gonna use this later it's gonna be of context and i will say create context and pass my initial state by the way i should import this from react if you can't we can do this manually I will say import create context from react. Okay. After that, I'm going to create my provider. I will say const auth context and provider. And it's going to take a prop here. It's going to be children. You're going to understand what I mean by that. Don't worry. And I'm going to use my reducer const is going to return us our state and dispatch that we can dispatch our actions like start login success failure something like that so i'm going to use use reducer hook here and i'm going to pass my reducer and finally my initial state and after that we are going to cover our components, pages, or directly our index.js here, our application. After covering this component, it's going to able to reach this state and dispatch. So I will say return my context here, dot provider, and here it will be our tag, and I will close, and here I'm going to write children. So in this case, our children will be our application. So what I'm going to pass to this application, I will say value 
and this application can reach my user it's going to be state.user and it can reach my is fetching data state dot is fetching and it can be my error state dot error and finally can reach my dispatch so they can dispatch these actions after login button they can dispatch this start action after getting response they can dispatch this success action something like that so let's go and use this provider so i will copy this and i'm coming here and here i'm gonna paste my provider let's import okay perfect right now i'm able to reach all these values in my application for example if i delete this from here and let's come to app.js and if i cover this product list only product list component will reach this data i know it looks a little bit complex if you don't know but after more practice you're gonna understand better and better let's go to the, our login page by the way we don't have any <laughs> login page i think oh i forgot let's create just basic one i will say login and inside we are gonna have login.jsx and login.css okay i'm gonna create my function and class name will be login i will call my login css import from login.css okay i don't know what to do here i will just create simple form it's gonna be login form let's delete here and we are gonna have just email and password i will say input login input it's gonna be text and placeholder will be email and here it's gonna be password and type will be password let's see but before i should indicate my roots so i will come here let's copy this and paste here i'm gonna say for login it doesn't have to be exact it's gonna call my login component let's see i will go to the login okay it's here but i didn't consider this top bar and sidebar that because our container here we have top bar sidebar so if i move this switch here and after div and i'm gonna move my login before top bar as you can see it works perfect right now and let's take this login form login and login form i will say with 100 percent hide 100 vh and it's gonna be display flex align item center just by content center i'm just trying to center this form like that and what about this form i will say login form it's gonna be display flex and flex direction will be column it's gonna be column related flex box something like that so what about this inputs what was the name login input i will say margin bottom maybe 20. i'm just designing right now i didn't know that i forgot login page <laughs> but anyway it will be just basic one i don't care about this design so what about this button let's come here create a button i will say login and class name login button 
let's copy this and here maybe i can change a little bit let's see first it looks okay but maybe color background color uh teal or okay it doesn't matter i will just clean this border and maybe text color let's see i will give padding maybe and cursor pointer okay it's enough i think important thing is our context here it doesn't have to be that fancy and after this video maybe i can release new page that we can reach in the github repository but for now it looks okay seriously nothing fancy so i'm gonna write here my use states for email and password i will say const email and set email and it's gonna be use state and of course i forgot importing okay it's gonna be empty uh, for the password it will be the same password and set password okay so i'm gonna come here and say on change whenever we change this input it's gonna update our email so i will say event and set my email let's close here and it's gonna be event target and value and i will do the same thing for password let's paste and this time it's gonna set my password oops okay and here i'm gonna write on click method when i click this login button it's gonna call a function which is handle maybe click maybe login okay let's create const handle login i will write here e dot prevent default otherwise when i click that button it's gonna refresh the page i don't wanna refresh anything okay perfect right now i can dispatch my actions for example i can say dispatch start and after i can use axios and try to log in my application if it's successful i can dispatch success one if there's an error i can dispatch error one but i don't want to do this here if you want to you can do this here or if you want to you can create here maybe api calls file and you can do all these processes inside it so let's do like that i will create here api calls .js. and here i'm gonna create my function but before let's import axios from axios and i will say export const and i will say login or login call doesn't matter let's say login it can be shorter so it's gonna be async function and after that we are gonna take our user credentials which is our email and password but shortly i can just say user and we are gonna have just dispatch that because we need that when we dispatch our actions remember what i said okay it should be arrow okay so first one when i click the button i'm gonna dispatch my start action so let's call it what was the name login start let's import okay and after that i can try sending my credentials to api so i will say try catch if there is an error, I'm gonna dispatch another action. 
which is failure. So I will say dispatch login failure. Okay, so I can try right now. I will say const response and axios.post is going to be our endpoint and login. And after that, I'm going to pass my user credentials, email and password. And after that, if it's successful, I'm going to dispatch my other action, which is login success. And remember, we are passing payload here, which is user. Don't forget that. And it's going to be response and data. By the way, they should be function. I forgot. It's important. Okay. They don't have any parameters and it has our new user. Okay. Awesome. So we can call it right now. Remember, we need user credentials and dispatch. So how I'm going to call this dispatch here. So there is an use context hook. Let's use it. I will say const. What we need here maybe is fetching and dispatch. Remember, in our context, we can reach them. And here I will say use context and I'm going to call my auth context. Okay, awesome. Right now, let's call our API call. Remember, it's login. I will say login from API calls and I'm going to pass my credentials email and password and finally my dispatch you can write here const user and you can pass email and password but you can do like that also doesn't matter so in this case if it's fetching maybe i can make this button disable so it depends on my is fetching if it's true it's gonna be disabled let's see I will say llama dev what was my email let's check here llama at gmail.com and it's going to be one two three four five six let's open our network here i'm clicking and as you can see it's 200 let's click here what we have our headers our credentials and our response as you can see it sends us our access key updated at email username everything here perfect so it works but there is a problem here if i refresh the page we don't have anything if i go to the home page we will not have any user we have to log in again and again so how i'm gonna handle this problem so after login process, if I save my information in our local storage, I can use them anywhere until I log out. So let's come here. I'm going to use here use effect. I will say use effect. And I'm going to say local storage and I will say set item. It's going to be our key, which is user. So I will say state dot user. But it's a JSON file, JSON object. How am I going to change this to string? It's easy. I will write here JSON dot stringify. And it's going to change this JSON object to string. So my dependency will be state dot user. So it means whenever I change the state, we are going to set user object. Let's come here and application. We have local storage. As you can see, we don't have anything. Our key will be user and here will be our ID is admin, every information. I forgot here comma. Okay. But what about here? Our initial state is null, which means when I refresh the application, it's going to be null again. But instead of writing here now, we can take our user from our local storage. Of course, if we have. So basically, let's delete this. 
I will say local storage and get item and user. If we don't have user, just make this null. Of course, it's string. Okay. And by the way, it's string that because we just convert this here. How about I'm gonna convert this to JSON file again, JSON object. Let's cover this and I will say JSON and parse. That's all. Let's see again. I will refresh my page. I will say llama at gmail.com one two three four five six I will log in and user undefined <laughs> okay there is a problem okay our process is perfect but something wrong with our value here so let's clear here and let's look at what we have for this API call okay I forgot writing here await and this patch login success response and data and here we have action payload by the way it's login failure by the way it's raining so hard again i hope i won't have to cut the video again <laughs> we will see and login success everything looks good but let's try i will refresh the page llama at gmail.com I will log in okay it works my user and my information perfect so even if I refresh the page as you can see it's still here so in this case I can make a condition if I have a user I don't have to see this login page we can go to do our dashboard by the way, I can write here one more condition that because normal user can log in also. But if I write here if response and data dot is admin, we can dispatch our login success action. Okay. So let's go to the app.js. Right now I can copy my use context here and paste here. This time I'm just gonna call my user. Let's import them and uh, use context hook. Okay, right now let's write here our condition. I will say if there is a user, just redirect to home page. To home page. If there is no user, I can just call my login component. Oops, it should be here, of course. Okay, perfect. So I can write condition here also, if we have a user, we can see other components like whole. So in this case, I can close my curly brackets after my div. As you can see, we have same problem here because we have div and top bar without any parent. So I'm going to use react fragments. And after this div, I will close. Okay, perfect. As you can see, we are in the home page. That's because we have user, we have admin. So it works perfectly. So what about these movies? By the way, we can implement our logout also. Let's come here for these actions. I will copy and paste them. Let's say logout. And it's going to be logout start logout success actually we don't have to do that that because we are not using our api it can be only just logout and it's gonna be logout i'm not using success and failure that because there is no reason to write them there will be no success no failure we are just gonna delete our users from our state it's gonna be null again so i will save this and here let's copy this and paste again this time it's gonna be just logout and our user will be null it's fetching false and error will be false too okay 
and in the alt context when we change our user in the state we are gonna set user again and it's gonna be null we don't have any button here but you can create as we did in the netflix application you can write here just logout when you click this you can dispatch this logout action and it's gonna make our user null again perfect so what about these movies let's create other context for movie context i'm gonna create new file it's gonna be movie context and js movie reducer dot js why i'm writing r here <laughs> okay and finally movie actions okay let's close here and this login and i will move this here so we can copy and paste things so let's take care about our actions first remember what we are doing here maybe i can copy this and uh, for movie actions i will say const get movie start movies actually we are gonna fetch all of them and our state will be movies and uh, in the initial state it's gonna be empty array and is fetching an error again okay so i can write here get movies start and two more get movies success and get movies failure let's change them also so in this case after fetching data it's gonna give us our movies whole movies so i can return them as payload it's gonna be movies my typos again so let's come here i will just copy and paste my user reducer authentication so let's change this it's gonna be movie reducer and i'm gonna change here also i hope this raining sound is not coming to you it's really annoying so i will say get movies start success and failure so i can delete this this time it's not gonna be user it's gonna be movies and at the beginning it's gonna be empty is fetching true error false and if we get any successful data it's gonna be movies action and payload and other case in the failure movies will be null again sorry empty array let's copy our auth context and paste here this time i'm gonna call my movie reducer and i'm gonna delete here movies and it's gonna be empty array let's create our context it's gonna be movie context our initial state and i will say movie context provider and i'm gonna change my reducer we don't need any use effect here and finally i will say movie context provider and my value will be movies state movies okay it looks nice i hope everything is okay let's create here our api calls i will say api calls js you can write movie api calls also but doesn't matter so i will say get movies so i will write here dispatch and here let's get started with get movies start action okay after that i can try and catch but before it should be async function and i will say try and catch block in this case it's gonna be get movies error failure and here i will say const response and it's gonna be axios 
and get method. I'm gonna use my movies endpoint. And here I should write my headers. And token, and I will say bearer. This time we are not gonna use actual JWT here. Instead of that, I'm gonna just get this JWT from our local storage. So I will say local storage and get item and my key here, which is user JWT, which is access key. Okay, access token. Of course, this is a string, so I will cover this and convert to JSON. So I will say parse. Okay, this time we can get our access token. And when we make a request, let's dispatch our success action. I will say get movie success. And this time I'm gonna send my payload, which is response and data. And by the way, I forgot here my dispatch. And here. Okay, perfect. Of course, it should be export because we are gonna use this inside our products. I mean this movie page. So that's all for now. Let's close all of them and open up our product page. Pages and product. Maybe I should change this name to movies, but okay. By the way, it's not my product page, it's single product, I think. I should go to the product list. Let me see, okay, here. By the way, because of this storm, I don't have electric and, and my internet, even if I use my hotspot, my operator just fucked up. Oh, so I should cut this video here and continue later. Okay, I came back. What we were doing? We were fetching our data. Right now, instead of our dummy data, we are gonna use our movie context and fetch our data. Let's write here const. We are gonna fetch movies and our dispatch. And I will say use context and it's gonna be our movie context. Let's check here. I'm not sure it's the correct name. Yes, it's movie context. Let's import it here. Movie context from context movie context and main file. Okay. Right now I can delete this. Let's comment this out. We are gonna handle this later. Let's fetch our data first. I will say use effect. When I render this page, we are gonna fetch our data. Let's remember what we have here. We have get movies and we are gonna pass our dispatch. So I will say get movies. I will import this and I'm gonna pass dispatch. Let's import this use effect. And here my dependency will be dispatch. Okay, let's see. Are we doing everything okay or not? I will just console log. Data, we are gonna use movies, but first let's delete our data grid here. Okay, right now it says dispatch is not a function. Movies and dispatch, use context, movie context. And here, ah, okay, that because we didn't use our provider inside our index.js. So we are not allowed to use it. So let's come here. I will copy and paste this. And right now it's gonna be movie context. And it's gonna be lowercase and I should cover my application. And right now let's try. 
I will refresh the page. Okay, have some. Our movies are here. So I can use it. Let's close here and delete this console log. I will command on again. Instead of data, it's going to be movie. Sorry, movies. But here, as you can see, we still have products, my stock, status, price. We don't need them. We should correct them first. So firstly, I'm going to correct this product. It's going to be movie and header name will be movie. Okay, it's going to be movie image and this one will be movie title instead of name. And here I will delete this stock. It's going to be, let's say, genre. I'm going to change here also. And 200 is too much, I think. It's too big. I will change this. Actually, let's delete here price status. Instead of that, I'm going to multiply this genre. And this one will be year. And this one is age limit. And this one is, is series. Let's check here. Okay, there is a problem. It says the data grid component requires unique ID. We provide here ID, but it should be underscore ID. But if we write here underscore, it's not gonna work either. That because it should be ID anyway. So what I'm gonna do is coming here and say get row ID. And let's say R, which means row and row dot ID. Let's see right now. I will close here. And as you can see, our movies are here. By the way, I changed some of movies. We have Joker, Flash, and I'm gonna add different movies and series later. For now, it's totally okay because we are gonna try to delete them. I didn't want to add the actual movies here, but there's something wrong with these IDs. I can't see them. Let's come here. Okay, I think we can change here. Okay, it works right now. I can sort them. Perfect. Right now, let's take care about this delete button. To do that, I'm gonna go to my context again. I'm gonna create new actions and we are gonna handle them with our reducer. So here, I'm gonna copy them and paste again. Let's say delete movie starts. It's gonna be singular because we are just deleting one. So I will change delete movie. And it's gonna be too late movie. So how I'm gonna delete any movie here? When I click the button, we are gonna take this movie ID and we are gonna try to remove from our movies array. So I will not take here any movie. Instead of this, I will take movie ID. For shortcut, I will say just ID. Okay, let's go to the reducer. I'm gonna multiply here and I will write delete movie, start, success, and failure. And at the beginning, we are not gonna change anything inside our movies, so I can write here take the current state. I will just use spread operator here and it's going to take whatever our movie is in the current state and if it's successful i'm going to delete the movie which has this id okay so i'm going to say take state and movies and filter this and for each movie i'm going to say movie.id is not equal action dot payload. Basically, it's gonna look at our movies state, movies array, and filter this, and it's gonna be a condition here. 
If the movie ID is not equal to our ID, they are gonna stay in our array. If it's equal, it's gonna remove. Okay, it's fetching false, error false. And if there's an error, again, state will be the same. Fetching false and error true. Let's handle this. Of course, I should write my API call first. I will come here and I can copy this and paste. I will say the late movie. We are gonna take our movie ID and dispatch. Let's call our actions. It's gonna be the late movie start. And it's gonna try to delete our movie, delete movies, and I should give here ID, and it's gonna be our ID from here. Our token here, and after that, if it's successful, I'm gonna say delete movie success, and I'm gonna pass my ID here, and after that, delete movie failure. Of course, we don't need any response here. We are just deleting. So, okay, let's try. I will just copy my function and here, inside handle delete, I will say delete movie function, let's import. And here I'm gonna pass my ID and dispatch. And let's go to the handle delete function. On click handle delete. We are gonna pass params row and it's gonna be underscore id. Let's see, everything looks okay. I hope it's gonna work. Let's try to delete this flash 10. I'm clicking. As you can see, it's not here anymore. I'm clicking again. Perfect, it works. So if I refresh the page, if they are still here, it means we just fail inside our DB, but they are not, it works perfectly. So what about updating our movies? Firstly, I'm gonna add here a link. After that, we are gonna go to the single movie page, which is product here. As I said, you can change names. So actually, we have link here, row ID. Why I can't see? Ah, okay, it's here, product and movie id okay right now i'm gonna change here a little bit we don't need this chart it's gonna be only our information and here we are gonna be able to update our information let's delete this chart first i'm gonna open my product so i'm gonna write here movie and here let's delete this left side Okay, and instead of this image and Apple AirPods, let's change them. How I'm gonna fetch this movie? I can use this ID, but there is a shortcut. We can use our links here, that because we have all movies. So instead of link to product, I will say path name. It's gonna be product and my ID. And I will say movie will be params.row. So if I come here, we did this before. We are already familiar. I'm gonna say const location. And I'm gonna call my use location hook. And the movie will be location.movie. So let's delete this chart and fake data. Okay, I can use my movie. I will delete this image and it's gonna be movie.image. And here I will say movie.title. Let's see. There are our movies. I'm going to joker and edit. As you can see, it's image and name. Let's update others. I will say movie.id and genre and let's say 
what we have here movie dot year and our limit movie dot limit let's see okay perfect by the way it doesn't look good i can change this style maybe let's open our product css and here for this key product info item and after our key So I will give some space, I will say margin right 20 pixels. Okay, it's better writing. You can center them also, but it's not important. Let's take care of here. I will say movie title and placeholder will be. Let's delete this and write here movie.title. It's gonna be here. And I can delete this select actually. We are not gonna use select. I will say input text and placeholder. It's gonna be movie and tier. So I'm gonna copy and paste this a couple times. I will do this quickly. Okay, let's make them file because they are trailer and video okay so let's change this image it's gonna be movie and image okay great so i'm not gonna show you updating first i'm gonna start with creating new video after that we can come here and update our movie that because i'm gonna show you how to upload image and videos let's skip this section and let's take care of creating so i'm going to new product and here we are going to change a lot of things okay let's go to the component i just close them all and let's open new product okay i will change here it's going to be new movie and there will be three images so i'm going to multiply this it's going to be title image and this one will be thumbnail image so i can change this ids it's going to be image image title and image small so what else we have we have title let's write here for example John Wick and it's gonna be description placeholder let's say description again so I'm gonna copy this and it's gonna be year limit genre and what we have duration I think let's say year genre duration in the updating page we forgot this one i think but it's not important we can change and finally it's gonna be limit so in my select it is gonna be is serious maybe question mark here and first one will be false i will say no and second one will be yes which means true let's change this id it's gonna be is serious and finally my trailer and video so i'm gonna create two more div here it's gonna be trailer and file and we don't need any placeholder it's just file video and file let's see okay three images other informations is serious we can choose here yes or no 
trailer and video. Perfect. But it looks a little bit strange that because it's really long. So I can change this form container. Let's choose here what we have at product one. Let's go to the CSS and see. New product and CSS. Okay. I can say here display flags. They are gonna look like that, but I don't wanna any overflow. So I can write here flex wrap. It's gonna be wrap. So for these items, I can give some margin or padding and it's gonna look better, I think. So I will say padding 20. Okay, awesome. So I can give height for this button. Where is the button? This one, I think. Height 30. But its position is a little bit strange. Align self and let's try center first. I'm not sure it's okay or not. Okay, perfect. It's gonna be really complex one, but we are gonna handle this. How we can do this? We can come here and try to create maybe let's say 3, 6, 9 and 12 use state but it's not a good idea it's gonna be really long and ugly instead of this I'm gonna create one new state for these inputs and individual states for these images and videos so I will say const movie and set movie it's gonna be our inputs so I will say use state and initial state will be empty object. Let's write more states. First one will be image and image title, image small, trailer, and finally video. Okay, let's delete them. And they are gonna be not object, it's gonna be just no. Okay, I will capitalize them. Okay, so right now, how I'm gonna update these all inputs at the same time? To do that, I'm gonna give them name property here. Let's say name image. I will copy this and for image title, image small and for others. And for the text inputs, I'm gonna give same function. It's gonna be on change. And I will say handle change. Let's copy this and paste for text. Here, genre duration limit so select can be also so let's write here I will say const handle change I'm gonna take event here const value it's gonna be event target and value so let's update them I will say set movie so I will say take the movie and for each name as you remember we just indicate here their names we can use them to do that you can use close parentheses and say event and target and name and it's gonna be value so let's say console log and we can see better I'm gonna open the console so let's write here something and for description as you can see it's updating perfect so what about these files I'm gonna update them one by one what I mean let's come here and say on change this time I'm just gonna set my states here it's gonna be event and I'll say set image and it's gonna be event target remember it's a file so I will say files 
and I'm gonna take first file that because we are gonna upload just one file I will do the same thing for other images and videos let's write here set title image sorry image title and set image small and for trailer and video okay we are gonna fix it and video okay let's make this trailer okay right now let's see this image for example so i'm going to choose that image here let's choose this one and as you can see our file is here name size type everything okay perfect right now i can handle all these files actually i can handle these files in the same function like here but doesn't matter it's okay right now what i'm gonna do is firstly i'm gonna change this button it's gonna be upload first when we fill all these files and texts i'm gonna click the upload button then it's gonna upload all these images and videos and then this create button will show up and when i click it it's gonna create a new movie in our database so how i'm gonna do this we can use again multer as we did before in our projects but this time i want to do something different we are gonna use firebase i just want to show you different things with each project for example in the next video we are gonna be using redux and maybe for upload videos and images we are gonna be using amazon s3 so each video you are gonna learn something different okay let's come here and write firebase if you go to do firebase and google.com after signing in you can go to your console and here you can create your first project let's write here something i will say netflix and let's continue you can enable your analytics or not and just choose your gmail account it's my default account and i'm gonna create my project during this process let's come here and open up new terminal and i'm gonna go to admin folder cd admin and i'm gonna install firebase library i will say yarn add and firebase so it's gonna install this let's come here and continue with our firebase okay it's ready right now we are not gonna be using authentication or firestore we are just gonna use storage let's get started we are gonna provide our reading and writing rules we are gonna change this later and just choose some cloud location here i'll say done so it's gonna be ready soon to use this firebase i should create a config file let's come here after source inside source i'll say firebase.js and here we are going to create our configurations connection of our storage and finally we are going to export this storage and we are going to use inside our new product component okay so it's ready this is our storage our images and videos will be inside this storage let's create rules here by default it allows only authenticated users but i'm gonna just delete here and i will write if true so it means allow everyone to write and read this storage so i will say publish of course i forgot if here if true okay it's ready so let's come here project overview so i'm gonna create my application let's write here something i will say again netflix we don't want to use firebase hosting we are going to deploy this project in the next video so we don't need that okay 
this is our configuration let's copy here i'm gonna use const and my configuration but first i should import my firebase let's say import firebase from firebase so firstly i should initialize my application to do that i will say firebase and initialize app and i'm gonna indicate my firebase config okay after that i will say const storage and it's gonna be firebase dot storage okay so i can import this storage i will say export default and storage okay it's ready to use it's really easy by the way you can write your api key inside your emv file or your storage bucket but it's okay for now if you want to hide you can so here i'm gonna create a logic to do that let's create another use state and i'm gonna say uploaded and use uploaded and in the initial state it's gonna be zero so basically it's gonna show us how many files we have uploaded at the beginning it's gonna be zero when i click the upload button it's gonna start uploading our files image title image thumbnail trailer and video so it's gonna be one two three four five after five it means we uploaded all our videos and the create button will show up and after creation it's gonna send all these file links and these inputs to our db so let's create here a logic a condition i will say if uploaded equals five of course it's not the only solution but it just came my mind you can try something else of course let's copy this and paste here and this is gonna be upload let's check as you can see it's upload right now so let's create our first function i will delete this and i'm gonna say handle upload it's gonna be e and let's say again event and prevent default we don't want to refresh the page and right now i'm gonna create a function here above this it's gonna be a const upload and we are gonna take our all items all files and after that we are gonna upload them to our firebase so let's write here upload and i'm gonna give my files i'm gonna create an object for each item and this object will contain our file which is remember our files here image image title so first one will be image and additionally i'm gonna give a label and it's gonna be image that because in our api let's come here models and movie as you can see our movie contains our title description and other text and also our images and videos so i should add them to my movie object here remember it contains our text but additionally i'm gonna add my files and their urls okay and for the others it's gonna be image title image small trailer and video let's write here the labels title make sure that it's the same name in your model here so it's gonna be small trailer and video they are gonna be the same name let's use this handle upload here inside our upload button i will say on click when we click this it's gonna call our function and after that it's gonna collect our whole files and with their labels and send to the upload function here 
So how I'm going to upload these images and videos. So I will say items and for each. So for each item, it should be items, of course. It's an array. So I'm going to create a function here. Let's come here on the browser and search for uploading Firestore. So I'm going to click this website. It's a documentation and it shows how we can upload our files. Firstly, we are going to create a reference. It's going to be our file storage. We are going to write here folder and file name. And after, if I say ref.put and inside my file, it's going to automatically upload my file to storage. And after uploading, I can get a snapshot, which means uploaded file inside my storage. And I can do whatever I want inside this function. So in this case, after uploading, we are going to take the URL because we are going to add this URL inside our DB. So what else we can do? Let's come here. And as you can see, there is a full example here. And during upload our files, you can also see the percentage using this function. When you click upload button, you can see 5%, 10% until 100%. And you can show this on your application or just a console. So if you follow this instruction, it's really easy. There is nothing complex about this. Of course, when you see them the first time, it can be what the hell is this, but it's how Firebase actually works. After a couple example and project, you will get used to, so don't worry about this. So I'm going to follow exactly the same thing here. Nothing new. So I will say const upload task. And it's going to be storage. Remember, we just export this and we can import here. Import storage from my Firebase. Firebase is here. Okay, so let's create our folder. To do that, I will say ref, and here I'm gonna write my folder. It's gonna be, let's say, items or content, whatever you want. And additionally, I'm gonna write my file name. Remember, when we console log this image, we saw our file, file name, type, and size, everything. So we can use that name. So I'm gonna say of course, I should use backtick here. That because I'm going to write a variable here. So it's going to be item.file and name. Okay. So if I say put and provide my file, which is item, it's going to upload my file to this storage. Okay, perfect. So what else I can do? I want to see the percentage of uploading. So I can say upload task. And it's going to be on and state changes. So basically, it's going to listen our upload task. And it's going to say every changes to us, every percentage. So I will take my snapshot here and use inside my function. I will say const progress is going to be my percentage. So we are going to be using a basic math here. I will say snapshot. Oops, I write here snap hot. <laughs> it's going to be snapshot. And after this, I will say bytes transferred, which we already transferred to our storage, divided by total bytes. I will say snapshot dot total bytes. So I'm going to cover this and multiply by a hundred. So it's going to give us our actual percentage. If you want to, you can write here another view state and update your progress. Or if you want to, you can just console log. Let's console log. Let's say uploads is, of course, string. And I'm going to write my progress here. My percentage. And percent done. Okay. So after this function, if there is an error, I will just console log also. Okay, absolutely. And after this, I can write another function. So I'm going to take my file URL after uploading. So I will say upload task again. And my snapshot and reference. 
as you can see there is a method here you can get your download url and um, after that finally i will take this url and set to my movie object with their labels so i will say set movie it contains all these inputs so i will say take previous and return me exactly the same state but additionally add here my item.label and oops label and it's gonna be my url and after setting my state i can increase my uploaded number remember it was zero and for each item i'm gonna increase this set uploaded and take the previous number and add just one after first item is gonna be one then second then two three after five it's gonna turn into create button and after that we can upload this to our db let's try first as i said by the way i know it's confusing but just watch couple times and look into the documentation and you will understand everything so let's write here our movie object i will say console log and movie and let's see right now i will open up my console I'm gonna write here something for description here and finally I'm gonna upload my files first one second third and my videos trailer and actual video actual movie as you can see they are not here because we didn't upload and get link I will click the upload it's uploading and it's gonna give us our links let's look inside as you can see our image small title trailer and video so there are links and all other informations and let's look at here inside our storage i will open up and as you can see items folder that we created and inside our images but as you can see we uploaded this image twice but it shows up just once that because the name is same so you cannot upload same image again so what we can do is changing our file name so i'm gonna write here const file name i'm gonna create a date it's gonna be new date it's gonna give us the current date if i say here get time I will get the timestamp and here I can give my actual item name it's going to be item file dot name so I can add this here so in any case I can add here something else it's going to be item dot label if the connection is too fast maybe item name can be same I don't think so but in any case it's more secure right now let's try I will refresh and I'm gonna choose same files. Let's say 111. By the way, I have to choose all these files that because they are required. I can't create any movie without trailer or movie or any image here. Okay, let's upload. By the way, something is wrong with this percentage. We are gonna fix that. So okay we have five let's check here i will refresh and as you can see five different files perfect so what about this percentage state changes okay it's gonna be state changed so what i'm gonna do after uploading i will come here and create another on click event and this time it's gonna be for create i will say on click let's say handle submit after uploading videos after getting other informations finally we can send our movies to database so i will say handle submit and again prevent default and finally i'm gonna call my api call let's come here we have get movies delete movies and i'm gonna add movie here so before let's expand this and 
for actions. I will copy this and paste here. It's going to be create movie. Create movie, start success and failure. And here it's going to be create. And not movies, it's going to be movie. Okay. After creation, it's going to give us a movie and payload will be movie. And we are going to take this movie and add to our movie state. Remember, it contains our whole movies. We are going to add one more item. Okay, I'm going to check everything is okay or not. Failure, success, start. Okay, perfect. Let's go to the reducer and create our reducers. I'm going to copy and paste here. And this time it's going to be create movie. Okay. After starting, we are not going to change our movies. It's going to be state. After successful operation, we are going to add one more movies here. So what I will say, I will say open new array and it's going to be all movies inside my state and movies. But additionally, I'm going to add here my action and payload, which is new movie. So all movies will stay. I will add one more. Perfect. And for failure, state will be the same, nothing will be changed. Okay. Let's come here, Our where is our API call? I will copy here, maybe I can write before this delete. It's gonna be create, I will say create movie. This time we are gonna take our information, our movie which we give here, this object, and dispatch, of course, and we are going to dispatch our actions. First one will be create movie start. It's not going to take any params here. And if it's successful, it's going to be create movie successful. And here, create movie failure. Okay. So remember our endpoint is going to be post and movies. We don't need any ID. But I should add here my body, which is my movie. Let's write movie. And my headers. And after that, it's going to give me new movie. Response and data. Of course, we don't have because it was delayed function. Response. Of course, const. Okay, everything looks right, I hope. So we can use this function right now. Let's come here and inside my handle submit, I will just say create movie. Let's import it first from our API calls. And finally, I'm going to give my movie and my dispatch. Oops, I don't have dispatch here. I will say const dispatch and it's going to be use context and movie context. Why it's not importing this? Okay, anyway, import movie context from my context and movie context and movie context. Perfect. So let's try. I will refresh. I will give images here. And title, let's say test. Description test. Test description. And year 2021. Genre can be drama. Duration 1 hour, limit 18 and it's not serious. Okay. I will open my console and let's upload first. Okay, still none. Okay, anyway, we will take care of this later. It's not that important. I will come here, 
Oops, it's not going anywhere. Did I do something wrong? Let's check here our API call, create movie. Everything looks okay, but okay, it's gonna be paused, <laughs> not paused. Okay, let's try again. I'm refreshing page. Let's choose items again. I will upload. They are uploading as you can see. And we have create button. I'm clicking. Okay, this time we have 201 created. Let's go to the movies. I will close here. As you can see, we have new movie here. Perfect. By the way, it's not our image. Let's check what we have here. So I just realized I'm trying to send all item here, but if you remember, it's an object. We should just send our file. So I will come here and say file. This time, this percentage will work, I hope. Let's try. And I'm gonna send. This time, as you can see, we see the percentages. And after that, we will be able to see our images here. Okay, they are ready. So I will create. Okay, there is a problem again. Okay, for limit, I just write text. It should be just number. I will change it. And I'm gonna create again. As you can see, it's successful. I'm going to movies. And we can see our image here. Perfect. And our whole information. It works. Awesome. So you can do the same thing for update. You can write here whole images and trailer and video. It's the almost same thing, so I will not take care of this. If you want to, you can go to the, your context and your actions will be the update movie start, update success and failure. After updating, you will take the movie and this time when it's successful, you can just create your map function here and change your movie. Let's do this actually. I know some of you will probably comment this and ask me why you didn't update, <laughs> I'm for sure. So let's do that. I will not do in the client side, but here I will just show you. At the beginning it will be the same and here instead of adding new movie, I will come here and say state and movies and I'm gonna use here map and for each movie I will say if movie id dot id of course and equals our action dot payload dot id because it's gonna be our movie we can choose id here also so if they are equal you can write here action dot payload so basically we map through all this array and if the movie id equals our updated movie id I'm just gonna change this movie with our new updated movie, which is our action and payload. Awesome. And for the failure, it's gonna be same. Perfect. So I can write here update actions. So I will say, and here, update. Okay, perfect. That's all. It's really easy. So we finished our movies. We can add. You can update, you can implement this client site. And what else I can do is creating list here. Let's do that. I'm gonna open my sidebar. And after these movies, I can add or I can change this. Okay, let's say lists. And I can find other icon here, material icons. And I'm gonna write here list. It was just list. I didn't have to just open there, but it's okay. Let's change it. Of course, I should add here link. Let's close it and cover our list item. Okay. This time we are not gonna go to movies. We are gonna go to lists. So if I go there, it's gonna be empty page. 
that because we don't have any router let's close here okay this is our storage you can close this actually also so i'm gonna create my new component and and i'm gonna indicate it in the react router DOM. so let's close them so i'm gonna change this new product product and product list so what can i do let's close them and first of all product list i will copy this and paste and i'm gonna change this name it's gonna be list 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 can be a little bit strange but i don't know what can i say for this it's just list of lists <laughs> okay it can stay i will change here list list css and list list let's open up i'm gonna change my css here you can change the name i know it's strange <laughs> so let's delete these unnecessary things and i'm gonna update my name this time we will take care of our lists so i will copy my movie context here and paste inside my list context by the way this c will be capital okay so let's open up i'm gonna delete them okay it can stay for now i will just change these actions i will say get list start and let's change them and it's gonna be get lists by the way it's not list it's gonna be lists because we are gonna fetch whole lists and after that we are gonna take our whole lists here and update our reducer let's comment them out we are gonna change them later we just need this list so for reducer i will close them also and here let's change this name get get lists and this time my initial state will be lists and other things will be the same when i fetch our list we are gonna update our state here okay awesome let's change this name it's gonna be list reducer and for the export list reducer okay perfect so it's done it's done what about our context my initial state will be lists it's gonna be list context list context provider and my list reducer of course i should change here okay and my context will be list context provider and it's going to be state and lists it's exactly the same thing maybe i don't have to show you but in the client side we are going to make some changes but this reducer context and actions will be the same there is no difference okay finally i can cover my application let's duplicate this and change the context provider it's going to be list and i can cover okay right now i can reach my data i'm gonna check one more time okay we will see i will open up my api calls so it's belongs movie by the way i forgot changing their names okay so i'm going to api call and right now let's comment them out and for getting lists get lists we are going to take this patch 
and I'm gonna dispatch my get lists start action. Okay, I can't import it. Let's copy this and paste here. It's gonna be our list actions. Okay, so my endpoint will be lists. So it's gonna fetch our whole list and send us a response. And we are gonna update our reducer. So I will say get lists success and get lists failure. Awesome. Let's come here and we are gonna change some things. Let's open up our API and our list model. What we have here, let's see. We have title, type, genre, and content. So it's gonna be easy writing. It's our ID. And here, actually, we don't have any image, so I can delete here. We have genre, it can stay, but I will move this here and change. Name, it's gonna be title. And I'm gonna write type. Okay, I can delete this and we are gonna have actions. And here I'm gonna call my list context. Let's change the name. And we are gonna have lists. Okay, for data I can use my list instead of movies. And I'm going to app.js to indicate my list. So here I will copy them and paste again. This time it's going to be lists, list and list ID and new list. And my component will be list list. By the way, we don't have these pages. They can stay for now. Okay, I will open my list and here I will fetch my lists. I will say get lists. I can delete this movie context here. We don't need this anymore. Okay, so I will delete this also. It's gonna be capital. Okay, it says no rows. Let's check here in the network. I will refresh. It seems it's here, but as you can see, our whole context, but it's not showing up here. Of course, it's gonna be lists. So I'm gonna refresh page. Actually, we don't need, they are here. Perfect. Maybe I can increase this field size. I will come here for ID, let's say 200, maybe more. And for them, let's see. And for this title, maybe more, let's say 250. Okay, absolutely. Right now, I will do the same thing for this delete method. So let's go to the API call and open up our delete method here. And we are gonna change just endpoints. This time it's gonna be delete list. And before updating them, let's create our actions and reducer. Let's open up our delete actions here. It's gonna be delete list start success and failure and it's gonna be delete list and here we are gonna take id params and update our states let's go to the reducer and here again open your delete cases and change your names list and state will be the same and for success we are gonna look inside our list 
and we are gonna filter them let's change here it's gonna be list and here is same okay awesome let's close here and let's go to the api calls i can call my actions i will say delete list start we are gonna look inside our lists and we are gonna give our id and after successful delete it's gonna be delete list success we are gonna pass our id and finally delete list and failure let's come here and handle our delete method i will say delete list from api call here and i'm gonna pass my id and dispatch it's exactly the same thing so i'm trying to delete for example good crime series i'm deleting okay it deleted but we can't see here it must be something wrong we are passing it so again something wrong with actions delete list start delete list success everything looks okay and here okay that because i'm trying to delete inside movie state it should be lists so it's gonna work perfectly right now i'm gonna try as you can see awesome so it works right now we are going to go to edit list let's come here and change our url it's gonna be list and list id we should create new component i'm gonna close them and here again i will copy and paste there is nothing different let's come here so instead of product we are gonna create list here it's gonna be list css and list jsx i'm gonna change my css file and function name this time we are not gonna pass our movie we are gonna pass our list so i will say list equals params and row so it's gonna be list i'm gonna change the name list create button i will say new list and here remember we don't have image and i will say list.title and id will be list.id we have genre we don't have year but i can write here my type and i can do it here and for the form to update our list i will write here list title is going to be list.title i will do the same thing exactly by the way it's going to be type and list genre and that's all i think we don't have any image let's see but before i should go to the app.js of course as you remember we just comment this out i can open this and i will say just list let's see i will click here and as you can see our list is here again it's not the important part but i'm gonna write the reducer and actions and you will be able to update your list but let's create new list so let's create that page it's gonna be new list so i will copy this new product and paste again and it's gonna be new list new list css and new list jsx 
I'm going to open here and change my CSS and function name. So let's remember what we have again, title, type, genre, and content. And this is our movie IDs, remember. So actually we don't need any of them. I will just write here list and set list. It's going to be null. And I can call my list context here. I'm going to call my dispatch. Let's import this. Actually, we are going to need movie context also because we are going to choose our movies to add our list. So I will say movie context and we are going to need movies and dispatch. But as you can see, we already have dispatch. So I can give this another name. Let's say dispatch movie. So it's kind of nickname. So this time I can change my state. It's going to be set list. And I will take my list and update with target names. It's going to be the same thing. But here we don't need upload. Let's delete or handle upload. It's going to be just handle submit. But I will delete here. And for these unnecessary items. For example, images. Okay, title, genre, name will be genre, and I will say type, but it's not gonna be input. I will write here select because we have just two options select, and name will be type. And of course, on change will be the same. Handle change. And here I'm going to write my options. First one will be movie. And second one is series. Of course, don't forget your value. It's going to be movie and this is going to be series. Okay, so one more thing we need. Let's delete them. Here. And by the way, we don't have this condition. Let's delete. Okay, absolutely. One more thing we need. And it's going to be our movies. We are going to list all our movies. So I will say content or movies. And it's going to be select again. But this time I will say multiple. Because we will be able to choose more than one movies. So type will be content. And here instead of handle change I will say handle select. Because we are going to make additional things here. And for these options I can use my map. As you remember, we use our movies here from our context. So we can get our whole movies. So I'm going to write here movies.map for each movie. There will be option and it's going to be our movie title. And here movie.id that because we are going to push these IDs inside our lists. So let's write here handle select. Handle change and handle select. Let's see first what we are selecting. E dot target and selected options. Of course, console log. So basically, it's similar to target and value. And instead of value, in the select, we have options. But before, I should fetch my movies. 
when we open up this page so i will say use effect and get movies and remember our dispatch is dispatch movie and my dependency will be the same let's see okay we are going to new movie i didn't update here i think yeah instead of new product it's going to be new list okay they are here as you can see i will open my console it wants us every child should have unique key it's talking about our map here as you can see we have map but it wants to get their keys it should be unique so i will say key um, movie.id because it's unique okay let's choose a couple of them as you can see it gives us html collection and for each option we are not getting this movie we get this html element so how i'm gonna prevent this firstly as you remember we have value here and it contains movie id so i'm gonna create an array with this html items and i'm gonna just take their values i don't care about html element so let's come here i will say let value and it's gonna be array and from basically we are creating an array and target and selected options and here i'm gonna create my function for each option i will just say take option dot value okay right now we have values which is movie ids i can set my list right now i will say set list it's gonna be previous list and event target name and it's gonna be value if it's confusing for you just write here console log and inside write what you are confused about and after a couple examples you will understand what i mean here you need just practice so right now let's see our list console log i'll say list and i'm gonna choose movies again i'm choosing joker okay it's gonna be target by the way let's try i will open my console i'm choosing this movie and this one and this one and as you can see right now our content and these movies if i write something here and title as you can see we have exactly the same thing that we need in our api genre title content and type i can choose type also actually i can add one more type here that because at the beginning it's movie but it's not selected like that so let's come here i will create one more option and it's gonna be type and we don't have any value so we have to choose movie or series like that perfect so right now i'm gonna increase this input width it looks a little bit strange let's go to the css file and for items let's say 400 and maybe i can increase this height of this content so for this content and select i will say style i'm gonna use inner style so height it's gonna be maybe 300 let's see maybe i can separate this 
title, genre, and type, and content will be in the right side. So how I can do that? Now I will come here, and inside this form, I will create another div, let's say form left. I will cover until my movie selection here and after that for the right side form right right now it looks perfect maybe I can just shorten this context let's say 280 okay perfect right now i have everything that i need only thing is creating my actions and reducer and updating my lists so let's come here actions i will open this create actions and it's gonna be create list and here after creating this it's gonna give us a list and we are gonna update our state in the reducer let's open our create cases list and it's gonna be don't forget change it here state lists and action payload new list okay let's come here new list we have handle submit we have our list here we can send this of course we need api call i forgot let's open up and it's gonna be create list we are gonna take a list list object and we are gonna start create okay that because i'm trying to delete after that we are gonna go to lists and we will give our list object and it's gonna create after that it's gonna return success action i will say create list success it's gonna return our data and finally create list failure okay right now i can use it i can delete this and after i will say create list and i'm gonna give my list here and my dispatch okay let's see i did an update here so i will say new list and for these placeholders i will say popular movies genre will be action for example and that's all i think let's update okay i will make this capital letter and everything is perfect okay let's write here something test list from client let's say comedy and type will be movie so i will choose some of them And I'm gonna create by the way after creation we can go to do our list that because we didn't give any action after create so we can see what's going on let's open up our network and I'm gonna choose 10 movies here let's choose like that it doesn't have to be time for now it's just a test I will create and it's not creating i think there is a loop here yeah as you can see 
so it says it's in the API calls. Let's look. Oh, I called my function here. <laughs> it should be start. Okay, let's try again. I will refresh. Let's write here something. I will create. Okay, it's 201. Perfect. By the way, after creation, we can go to the our lists. So what can I do here? I can use history. I will say const history and it's going to be use history hook. So after handle submit, I will say history dot push And let's go to the list. I will write again. I will create. And we are going to lists. Okay, perfect. So we can delete, we can create, and you can update also. I will not show you in here because we already did creation. It's almost the same thing, but I can write for you our actions and reducer actually it's here it will be the same it's gonna be update let's start success and failure as always and here and we are going to reducer let's open up our update movies and change the name This time it's going to be lists, state lists, and for each list, we are going to check our ID. If it equals our ID, we are going to just update with new one. It's exactly the same thing in movies. Okay, so you understood context API. As I told you, after a couple examples, it's much, much easier. As you can see, we are just commenting on our actions and reducer and each time as you realize is faster you can do the same thing with users it's the homework for you you will do the same thing you are going to create your users you will delete them edit them and create new users if you understood everything it's going to be really easy for you there is nothing different seriously i just don't want to write same thing again and again because it will be the same delete functionality edit or create everything will be the same and you can upload profile pictures for the users it's gonna be really good challenge for you so i'm gonna end this video by the way so i can fix some issues in the client side i'm gonna explain what changes i made okay firstly i added some movies here and some lists and it looks really nice i like it but some problems here. Firstly, when I click the movies, as you can see, our lists are empty. That because, let's go to the app.js. So this tab should be movie. That because when we fetch our lists, we are sending our type and it's not movies, it's movie. Let's go again. I'm clicking right now. Right now, it looks amazing. Awesome. There is one more problem here. We can choose any genre. As you can see, our lists are still same. Because we didn't set any genre inside our featured component. Let's come here. As you can see, we have only type. How about I'm gonna fix that? Let's go to the home page. And here, as you can see, we have set genre, but we didn't use it. We didn't set any genre. So I'm gonna pass this set genre and we are going to set inside our featured movies. I will take this prop and here for the select I'm going to say on change it's going to be E and set genre 
e.target.value. Okay, let's try. So as you can see, we have comedy, popular horror movies, and this is general movies. So let's choose only comedy here. I'm choosing. Okay, there is a problem. Let's see quickly. Let's choose something else. Uh, okay, it works. I think we didn't have any comedy. Okay, as you can see, it works. So it was not comedy, I think. So let's look inside our list. We can check the genre and our lists. We have general series, series. This is horror. Okay, there is a typo here. It should be comedy. So let's choose other one. Horror and comedy again. This time it's here. Perfect. So what else we can do? We didn't create any context API for this site. Let's create our authentication. Actually, I will just copy and paste from our admin. Where is our context here? I will copy this and paste inside my client site. I will just paste. Okay. Let's look inside our actions. Login and logout and our reducer. Everything will be the same. And our context. Okay, it looks nice. And here, I'm just gonna change this condition because we don't have to be admin. In any case, we can just log in and let's go to the app.js. And here, as you remember, we just created a pseudo user. This time, we are not gonna use it. Instead, I will just use my context and my store. It's gonna be use context. and of context okay let's import import from my where is my folder okay here of course we should drop our application let's go to the index chess I'm gonna write here auth context provider and I'm gonna wrap my application but there is a problem here does not contain default export so here it's gonna be destructured okay right now we are gonna be using our user in the local storage but we didn't log in or register let's handle them I will open register and here as you can see we have login and password so after handle finish I can just register using Axios so I will make here async function by the way you can write your implementation inside context API but we are not gonna store anything after registration so we don't need them I think after login process we are gonna store our user so we are going to be using context API after login. So here I will say await and Axios is going to be post method and I'm going to write my endpoint and register. After that I'm going to give my credentials which is email and password. And after that I just want to go to login page. To do that remember what we are doing, we are using history. So I will say const history. It's going to be use history hook. To use this history, we can push any link. So I will say push is going to be login page. Of course, try catch. 
if it's successful we are gonna go to login let's see I'm gonna write here another email test llama.com get started and my password and start now oh, it's refreshing page that because we didn't write here prevent default it's really important let's check by the way did it create it or not okay it didn't let's check again test at test.com one two three four five let's start okay the problem probably our username because we don't provide any username I will try again okay as you can see it says we don't have any username so how we can handle this problem we can create one more input in the Netflix page the registration was like that after registering your email and password it asks your country your payment method your username but we don't have any of them I can write here one more input so it's gonna be username and let's create here username and after handle finish we are gonna set our username and here username ref and let's create username ref and of course I'm gonna pass my username also here so let's check again I will refresh email test test and username let's say last test I hope it's gonna be last one let's open console and network and as you can see we are going to login page and registration is successful created perfect so what about this login page let's go to the login and here we don't have any email or password so let's create I will say const email and set email it's gonna be use state and empty string one more and it's gonna be password so when I change this input it's gonna change our email so I will say on change it's going to take event and set email it's going to be event target and value let's copy here and for password oops value set password okay and let's write here a function on click it's gonna be handle login const handle login and arrow function I will say prevent default and after that I'm gonna call my API call which is login of course I'm gonna need this patch also but before let's give our email and password and it's gonna be this patch let's import this I will say const this patch and equals use context let's import our context 
here. So it's ready, I think. Let's see. I'm going to open my console here and application in local storage. The user is null right now. Let's write here our email and password test and test.com. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to sign in and perfect. It works and we are in the home page. Change your password because it's so weak and awesome. What else we can do? We can handle our logout. So let's go to the now bar again. And for our logout button, I will say on click. Actually, we can directly call our action. So let's import our dispatch. Const dispatch and use context. Let's copy this and dispatch our action, which is logout. Remember, it comes from our action. Let's try. Of course, this is a function, so I should write here arrow function. Let's see. I'm going to click. Nothing has changed. Of course, it should be function. Let's try again. As you can see, we are in the register page and our user is null right now. Let's see. Okay, it's null. Perfect. It works. So what does? Let's sign in again. And in the comments, you ask many times, I saw, you keep saying, make this responsive. <laughs> so let's do that. Let's come here and choose iPads. For example, this is going to be our breakpoint. And other breakpoint will be for fonts. Maybe it says 300, but we can make a little bit larger. So what I mean by that, let's come here, close everything. And remember, we have a global SCSS here. And I'm going to create some magic here, which is mixing. And its name will be tablet. It's exactly the same thing what we are doing in CSS with media queries. So I will say media. So I'm going to write here my max width or minimum width or whatever you want. So let's say max width is going to be 768 pixels, which is a common breakpoint for small devices. So this is going to be our kind of function. And here I'm going to write content. So in this case, we can use this mixing everywhere and write our content. For example, our class names, you will understand better right now. Just wait and one more and it's going to be mixing mobile. And max width, let's say 480. By the way, semicolon here. OK. So let's try. If you look at here, our top bar looks a little bit strange. Let's change this. Let's go to the now bar. Of course, CSS. Let's import here our mixins inside our global CSS. So I will say import and app CSS. So right now I'm able to use my mixin. Let's come here. As you remember, this is our links. So I will say include and for tablet mode, it's going to be display none. As you can see, they are not here anymore. Maybe 
we can say series and movies can stay but others will be disappeared so to do that i will write class name maybe now bar main links i just made out this name i just want to do things quickly i will choose and here let's say now bar main links and include tablet let's say display block of course it's gonna be and sign here because it's not child it's exactly the same thing with span so as you can see we have series and movies and everything looks perfect if i change this let's say iphone this time maybe we can delete our logo where is our logo this is i think so i will paste again this time it's gonna be mobile let's see and as you can see we have series movies and our information perfect and for tablet here looks good there is nothing wrong with this featured movie i think let's look at iphone yeah it looks nice maybe we can widen this description featured movie and uh, where's our description okay it's here so i'm gonna paste i will say mobile and width will be let's say 400 we can check i didn't create before so we are gonna see it together it warns us that because we didn't import our global css this mixing so let's write here and let's see okay it's too much i think 400 pixel is not a good idea because already our mobile is around 400 so instead of pixel let's say 60 vw okay it's better i think and for this title we can do the same thing it looks big okay awesome if i look ipad it already looks nice so awesome so what about these movies because as you remember for our list we have a slide number five but it's for desktop that because let's click here five times one two three four five and i'm clicking and it's not going but we have still movies there that because our screen is small so how i'm gonna handle this so i will write here click limit use state so i will say click limit and let's change here but this time i'm gonna calculate something and it's gonna be window and inner width which means our width of our application for example right now it's 768 and divided by 230 which is our item width remember so how can i use this click limit let's come here and right now instead of 5 i'm gonna say 10 which is our total movie number and i'm gonna say minus click limit so right now let's refresh i'm clicking one two three four five six seven and that's all it's ended so it works perfectly so if i go to the iphone for example let's refresh right now i'm able to click more one two three four five six seven eight and nine as you can see we are able to see all these movies 
So that's all I think. If we go to the movie, let's click. It's already full screen. So everything is okay right now, I think. Of course, we can enhance this design, but it already looks good. I don't know. If something comes to your mind, just change using your tablet mode or mobile mode. Also, you can add here more breakpoints. So we finished this project. If you learned something new today, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you wrote any comments, even just one word, I would be appreciated. It really motivates me. And for the future project, you can support the channel by joining or using support links in the description. Okay, don't forget to follow Lamadev's social media accounts. You can ask your questions, find your coding buddy and get some inspiration from other users. So I hope I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.